plane and take a boat I don't really care Just as long as it will get us there Cause I wanna see what's above I wanna see what's below Just tell me where you wanna go You can name the place, yeah You can name the time We can leave it all behind No stop or rewind Hello, 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 and welcome back to week seven of a CEA Open League here. Uh, tonight, ahead of us, we have Case Western University versus Purdue. Uh, in the last week before playoffs here, uh, I'm here joined by Zerfan. Hello, Zerfan. What's up? How's it going? Uh, I, what are your thoughts on this match ahead of us? I mean, it, if you want to give a little backstory about it, feel free. Well, so far in the season, I believe Case Western are 4-1-1. One, one. That is four wins, one tie, one loss. Well, Purdue is currently one win and five losses. So the odds do seem to be going towards Case Western. And I believe if Case Western wins this too, they're going to be able to make playoffs. This will be the second in their division. Yeah, so looking at the stats, Case Western needs to at least tie this game. That's either tying both maps or winning one, losing a map, uh, to even have a chance to qualify for playoffs. Um, I, they need a little bit on the round differential side as well, um, but Case Western is, is really definitely at least needs this tie to even be considered here. Um, 
but it it definitely should be an interesting match. Um, I believe Case Western is third in the division, and Purdue is looking at seventh right now. Um, but Purdue is the only thing standing in Case Western's way of playoffs at this current moment. Um, so it should be interesting to see. Um, I believe the first map we'll be going to is Coastline, uh, and that is Case Western's pick. And then the second map after that um, will be Consulate, and that is Purdue's pick. Um, both uh, are attacking on their map pick. So it, it, it should be pretty interesting. I'm, I'm excited to get into the game here. Yeah, especially on a frag-heavy map like Coastline, where a lot of, just a lot of the rounds can go in the way of just kills. It really does come down to gun skill overall. On other maps, obviously, there is a large amount of strategy involved. Not saying that Coastline doesn't need it, but kills do matter quite a bit on this map. Especially in the center area, seeing as it's open, you can cut off entire parts of the map just by watching the hallways from the roof. Yeah, a lot of really long angles. Um, and like you said, Coastline isn't a very strat-heavy map. It doesn't mean that strats are useless. They are very good. Um, but it, it does just tend to come down to frags basically um and i i don't think i've seen either of these teams play yet so i'm not sure uh which team stacked with the fraggers um uh, i mean i'm sure we'll find out uh in the game here uh, in when we start in just a few moments yeah um and just to read out the players names real quick case western currently has levent kwan orion noxious and tango mango down and on the side of Purdue, there's Oscillation, Saber Gone, Vugos, Metro, and Laggers. Both teams do look pretty strong, if I'm being honest. Although, I, I feel like Purdue, they have, they've had six weeks of just games where they've been either smashed, and obviously one where they won. They should know what to do at this point, especially seeing what they're weak against. But it could just come down to obviously Case Western's third, and you don't get there just by not, you know, not performing. So it could they could just be the better fragging team, or just they have more cohesion. Obviously, it doesn't just come down to frags; it comes down to teamwork as well. And we'll see who's going to be better in this match. Yeah, and of course, being week seven with six weeks past of vods and stuff out there, um, Purdue could have just gone crazy with VOD review just to try to shut Case Western down and lock them out of playoffs. Um, it, it definitely would be interesting to see if that's something they did because, again, at the end of the day, Siege just kind of does come down to strategies and just being able to work well with others. And if you can shut that uh, shut that down, well, I mean, it, it always feels great. It's great to watch. Um, I'm hoping for some really close games here. Anyway, we'll be getting into the map right now. As we start, we're going to be getting into the ban phase in just a second here. I believe Purdue gets the first ban, if I'm correct. And... Yeah, Purdue's defending first, so they will get the first ban. So it looks no. like they may still be selecting their bans. Usually, Some teams come in and just insta-lock, and I think it just went through right now. So we're going to have to see what they ban real quick. It, it, it's interesting what different teams ban. Um, some bans are, not to say throwaway bans, all bans are always useful. Um, but some are just more common and not quite as useful as others, where there are like specific target bans, either tar uh, target banning specific players or specific operators, either shutting down, you know, Hard Breach, or I know Thatcher and his EMPs have been uh, quite the massive target this season. Um, you know, there's always the nice cross uh, talk and chat there, trying to, you know, play the <laughs> mental game with your opponent. It's always fun to see. Yeah, and curiously, the ones that are going to go are Monty and Twitch, all GIGN on tag being banned. Monty, just because he can act as a drone, if you just push behind him or just have him push alone, there's not much the defenders can do, especially post-plant. Twitch for her drone, she was recently nerfed, I believe, where she can only do one damage now, but in return, she gets infinite infinite uh, tasers, but you have to wait for them to regen. So... But uh, along with that, yeah, as pointed out right there, target ban on Twitch. Twitch is a very just powerful, powerful operator. Just due to her F2, just being able to shred and out DPS almost every gun in the game at the moment. Yeah, some consider the Twitch uh, change a nerf, some consider it a buff. It really depends on who you ask. Uh, the DQ's damage definitely does hurt, uh, but the fact that she does have 
almost unlimited charges as they do recharge is definitely a big help uh, and on the defensive side our last ban is going to be the Mira uh, a, a pretty standard ban across all maps but specifically on coastline which is coincidentally coincidentally Mira's map um, she's pretty strong especially in penthouse bars actually I don't really know a site where she's not very strong uh, she's just overall a really solid operator also the Mira ban is also pretty good here as if you didn't ban Mia, you could have brought her. Without a Twitch to take her out Delta, you'd have to go directly engage her from either above, below, or just try and take it head on. But because Mia is gone, you don't have to deal with any of that anymore. Yeah, it would have been interesting, uh, you know, the two countered ops there get banned. Um, but, you know, we'll, it'll, we'll see how it plays out here. Uh, we'll be starting off in Hookah, you know, pretty standard first site here on Coastline. Um, Pretty pretty solid, well-rounded loadouts on both sides. A lot of intel coming out from the defensive side here with Maestro with his evil eyes, Valkyrie with her black eyes, and Mozzie with his pests, uh, which also acts as intel denial. Um, meanwhile, on the attack with the Jackal to try to shut down that roam, a good read as the defense did have a vigil, but they decided to six off of it. Um, so still overall a really solid operator, but won't be quite as useful. Uh, overall, a good six pick from Purdue. Yeah, also, Case Western doesn't need to be bringing any hard breach with them, but you don't really need too much hard breach on this map. The only map I can, or site I can really think of using it is on maybe Kitchen if you want to open up one of the walls that goes into Kitchen itself. But especially on this side, what you can just do is you can really just walk through Aqua and try planning behind the bomb, and you're pretty much good from there. There's not much hard breach needed unless you decide to open up the wall that goes into Atrium. Yeah, like you said, a lot of the hard breach on Coastline in general is, is kind of... Uh, it's it's not necessary. You can do it if you want to. It does provide some really good sight lines, uh, but it's not really necessary at all. It's 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 one of the few maps that actually does that. Most other maps you need at least one hard breach, or sometimes even two, like Clubhouse, for example. But it's a club. Uh, Coastline in general is just an interesting map, especially like you said earlier with the courtyard going straight through. Uh, we don't see any of the attackers taking advantage of that quite yet. Instead, it looks like they're going to try for a hookah push here, just droning it out, just trying to feel how it's going. And of course, we see Jackal he is taking advantage of that inner courtyard area from the rooftop. Yeah, Jackal's not something we see too often these days just because of how often he gets banned in ranked and comp matches. So he can do very well here, especially seeing as Elysian is rotate. Or, sorry, he's on the other side of the map away from his team. He can easily be tracked down in second. But it looks like, I think, Jackal's still on the roof, so he won't be able to scan too many footprints from there. And Valkyrie's just looking through the newly buffed shields, waiting for attackers' heads to be seen before she can just try peeking out and shooting them real quick. Interestingly enough, though, trying to go against the... Uh, Capital there. He does have those flame bolts that can really punish her, but punishing her from behind is the Ash who moves up from VIP and gets a quick triple. Oh my goodness, great play from Quan there. Uh, there is a response, and Levin is taken off the board from Oscillation, probably from below. Uh, trying to push back up Cool Vibe stairs here, but is going to lose the gunfight out to Capital. Uh, no, they're going to trade actually. Leaving it down just to Metro here, trying to push through luggage into Aqua. Uh, and it's now down just to him. The diffuser is going to get picked up and probably brought back into sight. And Metro's going to have to try to push in here and take back what he's lost. Yeah, plan is currently going down, but all rotates are being watched by Case Western. And as I say, that mod is immediately going to die as Sophie is already watching it. Uh, 1v5s are really hard to even get a couple people on, as long as the enemy doesn't play as five different one-on-ones you usually are gonna lose those yeah there was a lot of intel operators on the board so it there was probably one of the situations where it was more doable just because siege is such an intel heavy game having those calls and even pings if necessary of where uh, the enemies are is always super useful uh, but i don't believe mozzie got any drones that he could really utilize to take back sight um, but in return, Purdue is going to try to go back to Hookah and try to hold it, probably try to shut down the Ash from pushing VIP hallway and getting that quick triple like she did last round. Yeah, despite the intel that they had that round, you know, they have a Valkyrie and a Mozzie, there was just no one watching that entire Defender hallway, and Ash just walked up and got three diamond. of them, even hip-firing down the Val, which really shouldn't have worked. Um, they're most likely going to fix it this round by having some intel, just having someone constantly watching it, because it's not acceptable just have an Ash 
somehow crouch walk up that close to sight and take out three vital characters in less than a few seconds, honestly. Yeah, that definitely was a huge misplay from Purdue. Just having that blind spot there, not having any intel. You see the barbed wire there from Jaeger going down right outside VIP door just to give the defenders a little bit of a heads up in case they do decide to push from VIP. A nice, a nice little sudden uh, change there that is definitely going to help them out a lot in this round, or at least prevent Ash from pushing up VIP again. Are Basically, gonna be making a small kill hole on the floor. This goes right into office, and for those who don't know, you can just look through this drone hole, and if someone decides to walk trying to look at the servers, they really can't react to that, as no one's going to be watching for that. And even if they do, you'll see their feet first and get down them pretty quick. If someone does decide to go into office, they're most likely just going to get taken up by Maestro. But it doesn't look like there's going to be anyone going, as Case Western is going to start from going the same area as last time, starting from the northeast and just heading in from VIP. You see the drones going out bedroom here and it doesn't look like there's any roam presence over here except I believe that was one on top of white stairs. That is Metro on the Mozzie. Um, he, I believe he used up all of his pests so he doesn't have anything to shut down the intel but he's just gonna play it back on those white stairs to try to not get droned out instead of us using his gadgets there. So she's the Ash and Sophia starting to push in and get a little bit of site presence here. Not site presence, but map presence. The thing what Metro's trying to do right now is instead of going for contesting or just trying to delay, he's trying to go in for the late flank possibly, which would explain why he just backed off immediately without even trying to make his presence known to them. As the attackers didn't actually seem at all from the drones that I saw at least. He just heard a drone and he dropped right off immediately. Where if he saw, he got seen by a drone, he'd be in some danger, but they still wouldn't have known that he was there. Quan's looking to try to push up VIP Hall again, getting rid of the barb just by a couple quick punches, but at least now they know that Ash is there, and you see a nice crossfire set up here from the Maestro and the Veld. The smoke coming out, and Capitao is actually going to try to start the plant, but La Laggers with a C4 there going to be able to deny it. Orion coming through luggage, and Aqua taking out one, but Oscillation on the Jaeger removing uh, Levent there off the uh, sledge. And things are going to slow down a bit as once two attackers are picked off and the bomb is down in the defender's controls. They're going to sort of try taking their time here. Zofia somehow doesn't see the Maestro. Maestro was able to take him out, but he only gets traded back by the Jackal when trying to peek the Ash. Good coordination, and Lagger's going to take down Quan immediately. Now it all comes down to Tango. They know where he is, but it doesn't look like Lagger's looking at the right direction as Tango peeks, but doesn't see him. This is just a battle of timing right now, as every time someone peeks, the other person who's the closest to him just walks out the other way and Oscillation takes down Tango after finally seeing him in sight for like a round. I think that he was in sight for like a good 30 seconds actually. Yeah, overall some really... Both of these rounds so far has had some really nice refragging here. Uh, as just kills start rolling out, you see on the on the kill feed actually a nice rotate from orange blue orange blue, um, which is really what you want to see, uh, either attack or defense there. Just trying to keep it even there. Uh, but Purdue was able to actually hold that site this time. Just a nice few small changes there uh, that really solidified that hold. Uh, and they're gonna opt to go to kitchen next. Yeah, Kitchen is also quite a tricky site to hold. You can hold it, this is actually one of the more flexible sites, I'd say. You can either hold it from the top or just completely forget it. And what some teams like doing is staying all the way in luggage, opening up some top walls of Kitchen and just watching the window from there. As when someone tries to come in and plant, you can just easily shoot them if you want. Actually, a really smart 6-bit coming out here from Quan on Case Western here, fixing off the Ash to an IQ. Uh, now, Ash has a really solid gun. Her gadget's also pretty solid, especially with um, Purdue rocking the Maestros, and well, what they didn't see is now the Vulcans, um, but IQ with her gadget there can get rid of all belt cams, Mozzie drones, um, she can even spot the evil eyes. Not, she can't quite do anything about them, but at least she can spot them out. Um, it might actually come back to hurt them though. Without the Ash and her grenade launcher there, those Vulcans are going to be a little bit of a trouble. Uh, they do have quite a few grenades. That's four grenades in total from Buck and Sledge there that can take those shields out, um, but it will be a bit tougher. They don't quite have the range that the Ash's launcher does. It's also worth noting that 
Quan actually brought an AUG instead of the usual meta picks of the 552 or the GA1 at this moment, as they both have angle grips and although the AUG does have a higher fire rate than the 552, it has lower damage, but also less of a fire rate than the GA1, both of which again have angle grips. And <laughs> just look at how big the AUG is, it takes up a majority of your screen, honestly, and you can easily just die from that any second. He probably put it on because he's got the black ice for it. Um, I know a lot of people that do it. I don't blame him. It's a really nice skin. Um, but in terms of fire rate and damage, sometimes you need that extra little bit of damage just to top off a down. Um, but we'll see if he can make it work here. We see some nice, well, I say nice. We see some bullet holes coming out from the Velk here on top white. As she starts taking some bullets, Mozzie, though, Metro on the other side in Hookah. The attackers are now in between the two roaming defenders here, and they're going to have to play by themselves. Jackal's going to try to push Velk out, but Velk's ready for it and gets takes Tango Mango off the board. And that's the Jackal gone. Getting these roamers out is going to be a lot tougher, and Metro's going to follow up with another frag onto the buck. And this is a great start for Burdu here and their roamers. They were split, but each holding their own lag laggers there with another. That's three for Purdue, and these roamers are just holding the attackers at bay. No problem right now. There must be some great intel coming out from the defenders on site. Attackers made a mistake here right now is they're taking too many one-on-one -on -one fights versus defenders where they have to peek the defenders. And it looks like, I don't know if Nomad knows the Valkyrie's there, it may just be a fourth kill right now. And it is, now all that's left is Quan left alone, who is their fragger, but he's going to get taken out by Oscillation. Once again, the attackers just took way too many one-on-one -on -one fights against defenders, which, when you're attacker, your numbers are your greatest power, especially when you're fighting defenders as... Roamers usually, they, they either roam alone or just in groups of two, right? So you want to either put your full team on them, or at least take three, so that you, you can still come out positive with the trade. But that's not what happened. The attackers decided they'd go one-on-one, -on -one and they paid for it. Yeah, Case Western kind of pinched themselves there, putting themselves in between both defenders. So when one frag came off, they all turned their backs, and, well, Mozzie and Hookah on the other side, that was Metro, just punish them for that too so really strong roam game and oscillation rotating up just to clean it up at the end uh, that was beautiful the attackers really didn't even get to push site at all um, but now the defenders are gonna have to go double bar site here um, as they've locked both hookah and kitchen uh, the Capital is going to be 6 on to the Zofia, and now so is the Mozzie. He's going to take a smoke. Once again, smoke can waste 30 good seconds, and you really do need those sometimes, especially when teams are pushing last second. You can just delay them as if they decide to walk through. That's a lot of damage taken, especially from a gas grenade. Along with that, they're going to do Castle to also delay the attack as much as possible. This does look like a delay strat, so they're trying to just get intel while roaming and also just delay them with castles and smokes oh yeah and i'm assuming they're gonna have another pretty strong roam game here after last round and both shotguns on metro and i believe castle's gonna be rocking that super shorty now that he's gotten that since the patch um, just being able to open up a lot of vertical holes and play vertically and help out your roamers from sight and yeah you see the impact going up i believe that was on cool vibes you see a castle barricade going in between Aqua and Billiards, suggesting that they will, in fact, be trying to hold on to upstairs as long as they can. I touched on this a bit yesterday, but the Super Short has made Castle quite a bit powerful, as his biggest weakness with the UMP was DPS, and at close range, that's exactly what you need. Bizzle can't really provide that either, so with a shotgun, he can do a lot of damage close range, along with mid to long range if he wants, as Castle's UMP has next to no recoil, and at that range, all you really need are headshots. Yeah, not, not quite uh, as much R, uh, RPM as I'm assuming he'd like, uh, but definitely a, a nice strong buff, and it just it rounds him out a lot there, just being able to help out with rotates especially. Um, we see the Case Western here on the attack, pushing into Aqua, looking like a pretty strong Aqua take. Um, some bullets going onto the feet of the Ash, a nice double breach, beautiful coordination there from Case Western, as that's the castle removed quite easily. Um, we heard the Nomad put an air jab on luggage, but Laggers is responding, and that's noxious. The Sophia off the board. I believe that was from a vertical hole. Oh, no, La Laggers is still in Aqua, and picking another, that's Quan off the board. Laggers is on a heater, coming off a triple last round, and getting a triple this round, too, but he's getting pushed out here from Tango on the Jackal, but no, he's gonna sit him down, too, and that's a quad for Laggers. Can he find the last one? He has defusers, but he will get downed, and 
God, I don't see any of his teammates very close to help him out here. Oscillation is going to be pushing up VIP. Going to try to stop this frag from coming out, but it will get confirmed. And it's now all down to Levin here. So you hear the toxic babes go out. Some bullets from Oscillation, and Oscillation is going to back off that fight. Purdue's playing this very well. After getting four incredible picks, they're just going to be falling back because they know the attackers have to come to them. They're just waiting for this man to walk into the crosshair. And even the Maester Camps can do a lot now as Levant has nothing to take all Maester Camps with. If he just decides to walk inside, they'll see him. They can tase him a lot. But now he just looks lost, trying to pick off as many people as he can. He seems to see Oscillation, gets him. Oscillation got a bit too aggressive there. Now it's down to 1v2. Still clutchable. It's very clutchable. All attackers and defenders are all on full HP right now. But he just cannot do close range as Metro has a shotgun on him and the other one's a LMG. He's going to be try shotgunning him from under. He's going to take around 20 damage from that. He's going to fall back a bit. He's going to drop the hatch and get taken down by Metro. As I said, shotgun, you just can't beat it at close range. He got aggressive there. It just didn't work out for him. Yeah, Smokes and pretty much his entire loadout there is is focused around short range. So if you if you can, you ideally take Smoke out from long range. But in a one v two, you have to push sight there. And it was just unfortunate that he faced uh, Smoke shotgun right in the chest. Uh, I mean, that started off looking like a beautiful round for Case Western there, breaching Aqua door and the wall both simultaneously and removing the castle no problem. Um, but thanks to laggers and just laggers being on a heater right now uh turned that around unfortunately didn't quite get the ace but uh, i'm sure he's happy with a 4k yeah just gotta pad those stats dude gotta this is gonna be one of cea's new clips for the next week don't you worry oh i'm sure it will be and you could even see the pings coming out at the end on the nomad there was intel above so that's probably why laggers was able to do so well was because he had his teammates making calls for him and uh, that's the beauty of siege yeah, especially now, it looks like it's going to be more vertical placing as Pulse is downstairs, probably trying to take out someone from Aqua or even in VIP as they sort of know at this point, there's no one pushing Aqua at all. They're usually just ignoring it and we're getting there much later as they start off on VIP. But curiously, on the side of Case Western, there's a Blitz, which I haven't seen in a really long time as Blitz just really isn't as viable as he used to be. Um, he, his flash has an enormous cooldown now, so he can't multiply flash people he has to wait like a good I think it's like eight seconds but that time the flash is already gone his hip fire is abysmal he's really slow and you can honestly shoot him the legs pretty easily at this point so I'm more thinking of blitz being just as a distraction as there's an attacker behind him decides to take him out and contrary to what I was just saying earlier it looks like they're going awkward to start off too yeah blitz is an operator where you really need to have a good teammate on your back that can act on your distraction and it looks like he's got two right now so he's just pushing straight into couches unfortunately he's gonna face the smoke and the maestro and with that 81 bullets from the aldo is gonna sit him right down his teammates trying to push in but just get punished as smoke finds one and valkyrie i believe finds the other but noxious pushing into hookah there finds laggers on cool vibe stairs i'm um, leaving it just down to levin and noxious um i'm i'm not even sure where diffuser is right now pulse is underneath them though giving out information the nitro is gonna come out and is gonna find one that's noxious off the board and it is again just down to 11 here diffuser in hookah it, it will get picked up but taking damage from below on the pulse that's going to be another round for purdue there yeah case western just try to get too aggressive there i think that they could catch purdue off guard but they were supposed to go in first with the blitz i don't think he expected two people to be there he was able to flash the smoke but then Maestro took him out almost immediately after then Zofia tried getting aggressive thinking that there would only be one looking at them not thinking that there would be someone after the blitz, but he got shotgun down immediately. And then from the rotate, I think Laggers got the jackal. And from there, it was just oscillation from under, taking out the last two. Yeah, I, that's the second time uh, Case Western has missed the Maestro sitting in that couch corner by VIP hallway. Um, apparently, if you stand still, they just they can't see you. I don't know if it's the skin or if he's blending in or maybe it's the fact that they were just so focused on the smoke. Uh, there was a toxic bait that did go off, so maybe they couldn't see very well through that yellow gas. Um, but uh, Pardue coming off a heater after round one wasn't looking so good, but four wins in a row looking for probably five wins here as they go back to kitchen. 
Yeah, Kitchen, they held this very well last time, so they can do it again. It's definitely just going to be amazing, as Case Western knows what they're going to do last time. They can obviously fix their mistakes this time, too. So as long as they are able to not take one-on-ones and just make it two-on-ones or three-on-ones, they will definitely come out on top. But it just comes down to them realizing their past mistakes and going off of that. Yeah, we didn't actually even get to see Case Western push Kitchen last time because both Metro and Laggers on the roam just shut them down so quickly. Um, they didn't even have to deal with anything like the Vulcan Shields, the Evil Eyes. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they can clear out the roam and actually start putting some pressure on site. I'm assuming that's what they were trying to go for last round, just hard pushing site with Blitz and a couple attackers on his back. Uh, but it didn't quite work out, so they decided not to take the Blitz this time and go for a more standard clear here. Um, probably going to try to take out these roamers, uh, hopefully more effectively than last time. Yeah, and they also went back to the Ash, as the IQ just didn't work out for them last time, I guess. And also, the Valcams, uh, you can't take them out of more ways than just one. You don't need an IQ scan, although that is the easiest method, as you could just take drones. But of course, those things are black. They're called black eyes for a reason, so you can't really see them well when they get in with the background, unless there's someone on them where you get the bright blue light. But it looks like this one going to start going in from Hookah, as I think there is one in VIP at the moment. Yeah, there is. It's Moz. He's just sitting there, and now he knows where they're coming from, it looks like. There's two top floors just waiting for the attackers, and they've all just grouped up in Hookah at this point. And Quan not going to have Flash. He's going to have Breaching Charges instead, so he's going to decide to drone in his teammates. Some nice play here is Metro and Laggers are actually playing very close together here. Laggers in 90, Metro in VIP. Just in case one of them gets pushed, they can play off each other. Opting to fall back after Laggers gets droned out, though, giving him a little bit more room here. Going to try to play more for time than Frags this round. Uh, really smart plays. It looks like the attackers are being kind of scared here. Uh, you see the first tracks come out from Jackals. Laggers swings on 90, does a lot of damage, but gets pinched from Luggage. So Ryan finds him, and now... That's Sledge opening up luggage. Metro, though, picking 90 again is going to find one, but quickly gets refragged from Quan on the Ash, uh, leaving uh, Case Western here with the man advantage 4 3. This is the first time they've done this coming off the of roam, uh, so they could get this done. Uh, Lugos, though, on the Goyo, trying to push up Cool Vibe stairs there, but with the air jab, is going to eat it. Uh, it's just going to run back down. Yeah, the defenders, they weren't able to do as much as they could last time. They did try playing closer together, but unfortunately just didn't work out as laggers decided to peek, took a lot of damage, and then got refragged right after. But now it looks like they're going to get closer to sight in order to take it over. They're going to do a lot of vertical play as there is one at service entrance too, and also one in lobby. But the camps are constantly pinging them. And thanks to that, Oscillation is able to take down Noxious. That is one of the... Or sorry, verticals gone. And now there's only one more top floor. If Oscillation is able to catch him off guard, it just reduces the amount of pressure on site by a lot, as the other two looks like they're going service. Barely missing him, finally seeing him, but unfortunately he's not going to get him, and Ash is just going to immediately take him out. He went prone at the wrong second there, and as you know, when you go prone, you just can't ADS, which is just unfortunate. They're moving to service and bathroom right now, and it's being known. Saber, he has Maester cams, but I don't think he's going to be able to use them right now. He's going to try pre firing with the LMG. No, he's behind a wall, never mind. It's a one on two, and Ash is going to take him out by the hold that PS or sorry Pennsylvania actually created or Purdue. God, I cannot memorize the universe. It's it's one of those P ones, right? It's yeah, it's one of them. This, <laughs> this PSU Pennsylvania, and then I guess Purdue there too. Three Purdue's as well. Yeah, that that wall and kitchen there not being reinforced kind of came back to bite Purdue in the uh, in the butt there, um, as well. Case Western does take the 2-4 split. Uh, not bad being on attack. Coastline does tend to be more of just a frag heavy map, not really sighted. Um, but just in terms of frags, usually the attackers clean up more rounds. Um, but in, in this case, Purdue re really did well on their defense here. Uh, in the side swap, uh, going to be going uh, the, the standard uh, hookah billiards. And Purdue lost this the first time they tried it out. Um, so we'll see if uh, Case Western can change that around. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but in order to get into second place, Case Western needs just one point, right? Yes, they only need one single point. So they're just looking to tie this out. So either tie this map and tie the next one, or win this map and lose the next one. Uh, they just need the one. But I believe there's also round differential, so they do have to worry about that as well. As the way that points are first and second place works right now is 
first you go off round, or sorry, first you go off points or the amount of wins, losses you get. But also they need to, you know, get a certain amount of round differential for that too. Yeah, I believe they were down three in terms of round differentials uh, in their division. Um, so even if they do get the tie, they need at least a positive three round differential here. Uh, and yes, they are down a three. So th they're looking to tie this out and have a plus three. And starting in the two four split here really isn't looking good in terms of round differential. Um, but as, as long as they get that single, uh, if, even if they, um, get a partial win that's two points um and they'll actually beat and come in front of elon uh, so as long as they if they don't tie this out and get a partial win or a full win they don't have to worry about round differential but if they tie they do yeah kwan's got spotted there early on so he's just gonna immediately fall back but he's still gonna stay in server actually i think there's two in there trying to hold it and Purdue's getting quite aggressive he doesn't i don't think he knows there's someone to the close right as noxious takes on saber immediately and the Dokkabee call goes out, and he's able to get the frag onto the dock. There's no more <laughs> healing being done for anyone at this point, but also he's going to get taken down on a refrag as Quan decides to get aggressive. Noxious also gets taken down. It's refrag after refrag here, and right now Metro's low on HP with all the defenders on full HP, but it seems like one is just caught out. He may not be able to make his way back to site. A site is looking kind of bare with only two people on it. If P Purdue really try, they could probably just take it right now. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting play to see two defenders holding security there uh, when Sight was in Hookah, um, but it did work out as Lagos did get the refrag. A lot of damage as Metro gets down outside of Hookah Belt. That was actually Quan from top white peeking those stairs with the MPX, not doing quite too much damage, um, but it looks like... Vugos here on the Dokubi pushing into, not on the Dokubi, the Jack Laggers is pushing into Hookah with the Diffuser by himself, trying to face that 81 bullet. All the, luckily for him, didn't have the 81 bullets just yet, had to do a reload and did get to back out of there, but definitely a risky play coming there out there from Purdue. Purdue is getting quite aggressive here, just not paying out for them as there's too much intel on the board. Although Mace is going to get taken out, once again, refragged by Jaeger, came from right behind, and then I think Quan is going to take out Metro. All I have is Vugo. Uh, that's Dokkabee, once again. The, the MK14, as powerful as it is, it, when you get into close range, you really can't use it, which is why the CZ and SMG12 are so good. He's going to have a bit of fight with the repel animation there, and he's going to try making his way into Aqua. I'm pretty sure Quan is hurt at this point. They know where he's coming from, and they have Diffuser too, so at this point, they just need to play the waiting game in order to get rid of Vugo and get their third round. Yeah, and now with three dead defenders sitting on cameras, lots of intel probably coming out here. And Dokubi, unfortunately, not being close to any of those drop defender phones to hack them and get intel for herself. The Nitro coming out here from Quan over the bomb, not quite going to connect. And, well, Quan and Tango are just playing it very patient. The call's going to come out. Dok oh, almost catches Valkyrie on the vault on the couch, but just misses the shots there as Quan finishes Bugos off. Probably do. Does she have the DMR, the SMG 11 out there. Either both tough guns. Uh, as the SMG has lots of recoil, and well, the DMR is a DMR, and DMRs aren't the strongest in Siege. The SMG 12 has a lot of recoil in it too, which is why recently a lot of people have been taking the CZ instead. It's still a great gun, although you cannot exactly, I guess, see as much from it. Yeah, it does block a lot of vision. I myself prefer the SMG-12, um, but to each their own. I have seen a lot of C7s out there. But we will be going downstairs kitchen, and, well, it looks like uh, the defense here is going to be showing the pulse instead of sixing it. They're going to six off the pulse. That makes a lot of sense. Forces Purdue here to six an IQ to try to counter the pulse, but, well, there's no pulse to counter now. Even so, it's still a good pick to six to the IQ, as there's the Valkyrie and a Legion. Uh, Legion, obviously not as strong as it used to be, just because... I, I do think those nerfs are warranted, and it is a bit controversial, especially because it, he was nerfed so hard, you can no longer see where his mines are, and there's no initial damage. Two big aspects of his gadget gone in one fell swoop. But it still slows down the attackers quite a bit as they, they still can't sprint, they do take damage over time and they can't interact with anything while it's still in them. So the IQ is still, I, I think it does work out just because along with that and the Valkyrie cams, that's just a lot of intel that they can deny it right off just walking to a hallway and just scanning it real quick.
Yeah, as well as the alibi, seeing the base of the holograms and being able to call out where they are is also a big hand. I IQ really is never a bad pick for attacking, as so many of the defenders' gadgets are electronic. But we are going to see a, a pretty top-heavy hold coming out from Case Western here. That's going to be Valkyrie upstairs getting uh, some black eyes out there just to get some intel there from her team to try to help her out on the roam. A drone in bathroom already from Lagos. It's going to be missed just barely there by Tango. He's just going to keep droning service. And well, Maester will finally put the drone out of its misery. Yeah, it is unfortunate that he didn't save it. He probably could have used it later, but he decided to just to get a bit more intel. And now Oscillation is going to be droned into Hookah. And it is clear, so they're going to start making their way up. But there is one in VIP and also, I think, one in Penthouse. These two are going to be working together once again. Roam game, when you're on your roam, you need to be able to work together. And that is what they're doing right now. They're opening floor holes. Yeah, Alibi's opening some floor holes there with her sidearm. Just getting some lines of sight right onto the service door there. It's a really nice angle there that you can open up. Um, the sidearm, they're not the best to open it up with. Um, but... The Purdue here on the attack has full top control on the west side so far. Still trying to push into VIP and Masters. That's where the two defenders are. You see some shots going out. The Jackal track there, tracking the Legion. I believe the Legion is one of the ones up top, so it is going to be tracked. They're going to have to keep moving as to avoid getting wall banged. Um, but still holding up top, still trying the best there. Defenders with half the round wasted already pretty much have accomplished their job uh, with a minute and a half gone. That's the, You're sitting pretty pretty as a defender. Uh, the cut will be watched here by laggers as there's a drone in front of him and while the defenders can no longer move out barely missing each other there. The ADS is uh, he's going to try for a wall bang but with no intel there isn't going to quite find anything just yet. Some more pings coming out, and Lagos is going to find the first one. That's the Valkyrie off the board, opening the wall with a shotgun, but Noxious is going to sit him down right there. Uh, one for one trade so far. Noxious, though, at just below half. Quan with a C4 from below, probably acting off the intel from her Valkyrie cams there. Beautiful play, and Legion with another wall bang as he hears the IQ crawling on the floor. Legion just holding on to this top floor as much as he can, and well, he doesn't have to do it for much longer. With only 30 seconds left on the clock, the attackers are going to have to regroup and try to push sight. Bugos, though, with one. Zabragon picking up another, bringing it back to an even 2-2. Two -two. Bugos, though, on the Zofia, very low, is going to have to try her very best here to get a quick pick and not take any damage. And the attackers are split up here on opposite sides of the site. This could be really good or really bad. Drone goes out. IDing where both the attackers are, and they're just going to try to go for frags, but Maester on the Alda is not a good gun to push into, and Tango will find the last frag onto the Zofia there. Yeah, the refrags were very well done, but although they just couldn't clean up near the end, as they came down to 15 seconds, and there's just not much that they could do at the end there. They did try sprinting in, as I don't think they had the diffuser on them, but unfortunately it just collapsed. Yeah, unfortunately, it, it was just overall a really good up top hold coming out from Case Western there. Um, Noxious really just holding on, finding a nice couple picks. He was sat down, but he, he already bought two and a half minutes there, and, and that's that's a lot of time when it comes to Siege. Yeah, three like three minute rounds. Like although it doesn't like especially when you play Counter Strike, it sounds like a lot. But it really isn't, especially when you have to run, you have to drone, like, the entire site. As in games like Counter-Strike, you start off with two teams in two different positions, and the entire map is theirs, whereas games like Rainbow Six, the attackers have to take the base, essentially, which is just the entire map. Yeah, it's a lot harder to do. You have to be a lot... Uh, you have to make your decisions a lot more quickly. You have to act quickly on intel as well. Uh, it, on a map like Coastline, it is one of the smaller maps of Siege, so it's not. It's usually not too much of a problem uh, with ops like Mozzie and Mute slowing down intel gathering. It, it definitely can affect it. 
but on maps more like consulate is a is a is a bigger map uh, as well as bank there's just a lot of uh, rooms and areas to drone and uh, you, ju you just have to be quick with a roam clear and it, it, it is tough you know, this is kind of a curious camp spot just i didn't know you could break those open and just throwing a camp inside of there uh Quite smart coming out from Noxious, but anyway, it is tied 4-4 now. They did have the 4-2 lead, and Purdue just didn't win anything after that. It just just comes down to, I don't think they've been as coordinated on attack as they have been on defense, and it's just not been working out for them. But Jackal is going to scan the one yellow footprint he sees, and he's going to track Pulse, he's going to try distracting the rest of the attackers as long as possible in order to buy as much time for his team as he can. Yeah, Pulse is probably one of the f one of the best ops to track. That's one of the ops you want to get off the board as quickly as possible. But you see the Cap Cannon Valkyrie drop courtyard here, and Laggers is going to spot that out and take the Cap Cannon off the board right away. Fortunately, though, Noxious on the Valkyrie was able to slip out of that courtyard and move into office. But Laggers is going to find her as well, and th that's a nice two quick a uh, quick two from Laggers there. Uh, but the Pulse is still on the board. You see IQ looking for his cardiac sensor. It's going to take some damage from Zofia there. And her impacts is gonna scan his footprints, not realizing he's right there next to him in blue bar. And well, he's pinched from the attackers now. He's just he's gonna need to try to frag out here, uh, but unfortunately Metro is gonna find him and sit him down. Yeah, Purdue seemingly just fixed their issues. Meanwhile, Case Western picked them up as they just two of them dropped into Atrium and they just started roaming with very little intel. As they didn't know where Jackal was, he was able to pick off two, one inside the central area and then the other as he walked into server and they had no idea where he was. And he's going to get wallbanged immediately by Maestro. I think that that was some pretty good intel. Yeah, someone's on his cam. They told him exactly where he was, as you don't always need pings. In fact, it's better just not to ping, so people don't know there's a camera there. And then Lagos got taken out. Yeah, and there's that Velcam still top white in that suitcase that we saw at the beginning of the round as well. Mousy, Mouse, sorry, Mousy here in VIP will get droned out uh, by Metro on the IQ uh, Defense here is definitely looking not great. Case Western in a 2v4. Uh, Purdue, really, really, uh, really strong roam clear there. Is going to be trying to push site with 50 seconds here. And beautiful shot from Metro onto the Mozzie there off the board. And it's now down just to Levin here. With the Alda in hand, it is doable. He finds one with a nice clean headshot. Still 54 bullets. Uh, that he has access to. His IQ is going to be pushing from Hall of Fame. If the attackers can just get into sight here and plant, they just need to cover the cross here from the Maestro. Yeah, it's only 30 seconds left, and it's a 1v3, and Metro's going to take a lot of damage, as Maestro knows exactly where all of them are now due to pings and the Capkin traps. And with the Alder, you can just mow them down. That's one down already, but the Diffuse is going to go down on the other side before he realizes Vugo can pick himself back up if he wants. And he does, but he's going to get taken out immediately. IQ is going to go onto the Repel outside. It just makes it a life a lot easier as Meso tries getting aggressive, but Saber knows what he's doing. He's just going to walk away. In order to make life harder for the Maestro, IQ is going to keep staying on Repel, try to get as tight of an angle as possible, sees Maestro's leg and is going to take him out. It was a good try, but Purdue is going to get the fifth round that they need. Two more until they're able to win the map, and one more if they need a tie. Yeah, that was... Having Valkyrie and Capcan drop Courtyard there definitely put Case Western at the disadvantage, uh, considering Laggers was right there to quickly clean him up. Uh, the round definitely was clutchable out from the Maestro, though, with that Alda and IQ being so very low, but just with that tight angle, I'm assuming Maestro couldn't even see IQ on the repel because she just saw his feet crouch at the window there. Purdue, though, finally bringing it back, finally getting another round under their belt uh, after the three uh, round losses in a row. Uh, but that was a tertiary site for Case Western. So going back to Hookah, we might see another round win for Case Western. Yeah, Penthouse has always been a weird site pick as early on it was the site to pick and no one liked Blue Bar and then randomly in the middle it became just not as good as a site. I guess once people, I think it's once bands started coming in, Muse started getting banned. People realized that it just wasn't as powerful as a site, as you need is basically put yourself into only one site and then try to get the other with mirror walls, and it just wasn't working out. And that's around when Hookah became the best site, and then Kitchen was the second best, and then finally Blue Bar. All of which have shown to be, honestly, in my opinion, better than Penthouse. Yeah, so, so far, actually, really interesting to look back at. Um, so far, these past nine, nine rounds here, um, 
all except for one of them. So eight of the nine rounds, whoever gets the opening pick actually ends up winning the round uh, with one case where Case Western got the first pick and Purdue actually brought it back. Um, but just just kind of interesting to see. It, it follows almost exactly here. So it, if that gives you a little heads up on what's going to happen into the round to come, well, there you go. In fact, just by Pro League statistics, if you get the opening pick, there's an 80% chance you will win the round. And it just comes down to once you get the opening pick and you don't die off that, you can just trade the rest of the way and you can win the round. And that's just... It just makes the, the fragging so much easier as you can just put people in pairs of twos and just get refrag after refrag and still come out with one man on top. Pushing Hoogie here, that was actually a really great drone spot in Sunrise down below. Checking to make sure there isn't a pulse or anyone with a nitro or even a shotgun holding below that could deny the plant. As it looks like there's going to be a pretty strong hookah take here. Uh, drones coming out, just going to check it out. On the defense though, just the nitros to deny from both Mozzie and Velk. No smoke on the board. Uh, Maestro with his evil eyes can do some zapping, um, but it doesn't do too much damage. You usually can get the diffuser down before you go down from this from the evil eyes. Yeah, evil eyes still gonna be watching uh, both Aqua and Sight, but it doesn't look like they've pushed in yet. They may start from the bottom. But there is two coming up to Aqua right now, and Yeager's going to try his best to hold it. And looks like Capital's going to try taking him out with the Firebolts. So obviously, you can't do that later on as Quan takes out Laggers and Oscillation takes down Tango. That is the Maestro and Jackal gone, respectively. Laggers, he's had quite a big impact so far, so losing him is quite the. It's honestly not very good. But now that Aqua is cleared, thanks to the coordination between the Capital who fired him out and Oscillation just took him out the second tried running away. They have Aqua now, and they can just start taking over, but I don't think they know that there's a person with a Nitro under it who can kill both of them if he needs to. Yeah, Mozzie underneath, watching through that hatch, I don't believe Aqua Door is castled or anything, but he can watch that and try to get a pick from below. Oscillation, though, is going to find another, um, bringing it even more to look like Purdue's round here. Uh, Orion could change this around, though, with a quick sneaky peek. Valkyrie is still holding below, but it looks like uh, Lugos here on the Zofia is going to push into Hookah. Find one, almost two, onto the Maestro. Maestro is going to hold it back here. Levin holding down Hookah with his life. Uh, you see Capitao here still on Skylight, just making sure there's no rotates coming out. And Mozzie's going to opt to use his, uh, his Nitro there and back out of office. Unfortunately, he just couldn't hit anything. He could have waited until the plants started going down and trying getting something there. But Metro's going to hit a Legion Mine denying the plant. As the two defenders start pushing up, they just need to make sure that they can deny the plant. And Orion does just that. No, he killed the wrong person. Metro's still putting down the plant, but he gets taken down in the end anyway. And they just cleaned extremely fast. The vent's still confused a bit there, not knowing that the entire team was wiped out. And Case Western's going to get away with this round. Hey, I, I didn't even realize that both of them dropped so quick like that. Uh, may have been a little bit of a misplay there from Purdue pushing in so far into sight to try to cover the planter there. Um, just being able to get picked off through those multiple kill holes in Hookah Wall. Um, but they did still have one in Aqua to cover uh, IQ who was planting. Uh, but unfortunately, just in case Western just place their bullets uh, that's another round for case western keeping this game very close um kind of unexpectedly i didn't expect this these games to be as close as they are i mean i'm glad they are I, I, close games are much more fun to watch much more fun to uh, spectate um but here case western is gonna have to go back to kitchen especially this being case western's map it's clear that there was quite a bit of odd review going into this as i think even without droning they knew that the jaeger was behind the uh, aqua bar and they were able to take him out very quick and they even know where most of the rumors are going to be even if they don't interact with them it looks like i know someone from case western before the game started did mention something about watching previous vods um i'm not sure if that was more of a joke or if they were serious but uh, from last round I, I, i'd say it was pretty serious there uh, just being able to root him out unfortunately they didn't have anyone to cover his rotate out uh, jaeger being flamed was forced to run out and if you have someone on gun there uh, it usually results in an easy free pick there, uh, but unfortunately it was just Capital pushing alone. Uh, but here with the Mozzie, the Velk, again just a lot of intel. Both of these teams really like their intel pretty much 
constantly rocking the Maestro, the Valkyrie, the Mozzie, and you can tell that the intel is coming out. There's a lot of wall bangs coming out from both sides just because the intel's there, uh, and and they can, and it's it's always works out for them. Yeah, kitchen here is going to be set up a bit similar to what Purdue did, except it doesn't look like the wall in kitchen is going to be open to watch from luggage. And I think there's two roamers top floor right now, as Mozzie is still on site right now, and so is, uh, sorry, what's his name, Maestro. Quan going to throw up some cams and try playing from under, most likely, with some nitros. He's going to make his way back to site, and yeah, there's Legion upstairs, and I think he's the only one. Is The other one is in luggage right now, they're split apart right now. Uh, that could come back to bite them, but we'll have to see, as Purdue did the same thing, and we're still able to get away with it initially. Yeah, so we see Noxious and Orion holding up top. One in Billiards, one uh, in Penthouse, being completely separated. Uh, when Purdue did this, they it worked out very well for them. The attackers put themselves between them and pinched themselves. Uh, and that was the flawless round that Purdue had. But Mozzie is going to try to take the peak onto a white window repelled jackal. And Rolagers is going to punish him for that. Um, that'll be the opening pick for Purdue. So, again, if that's... Tells you how the round's gonna go. We'll see. Legion, though, prone in theater, just trying to hold it out. Laggers does have the diffuser top white, and he is by himself. If Noxious can find this pick and hold diffuser, this could be huge for the defense here. Also worth noting, I think in VIP I heard of pre placed Nitro, which you don't see too commonly these days, but also Noxious is gonna fall back a bit and he's gonna get deeper into Penthouse, and I think he's gonna be about to be pinched out by both teammates as. There's no real way out from this. He could try dropping Hatch, but he just didn't do it. I guess you just may have forgotten about it. But now there's going to be attackers in theater along with VIP and VIP Hall. And he's just stuck in that small corner. He's going to get taken out by Metro. Who's just going to wallbang him, I guess. And the pre-placed Nitro is going to go off, but it's just not going to hit him. It's going to do very little damage. And now Case Western is down two players. It's a pretty common spot for the pre-placed Nitro holding from VIP into Hall of Fame right there. Uh, we did see the Valkyrie put her Velcam inside VIP, so the intel is there. Maestro seeing the feet of uh, Oscillation there on Buck, but not quite being able to do anything about it. And some pinks going out, uh, but unfortunately he's by the service door. But this wall is soft here, and he's going to do a, quite a bit, well, not even that much damage on the Jaeger there. It's only 25, uh, but Nomad there. Being able to watch the cross out, beautiful... Uh, removal there from Buck, being able to root the Jaeger out from service store there. Yeah, important thing there was he was able to get him off his angle, which then was able to be capitalized on. There's still Maestro and Valkyrie live, both on two different sites, both pinned in their respective rooms. And it's down to 15 seconds again as the oh, Tiki's oh, gonna no. come out. The game, they could just end it right here. They just need to team kill, or sorry, they didn't need to kill the one guy with Diffuser, who... I think it's going to push up quite aggressively, and there's one second he starts planting. Valkyrie could take him out any second now, and that's... Oh, no! He's going to come off a defuse at the last second there. That's not even what... Ha what happened was Zofia decided to take out her stun grenades trying to throw it at Valkyrie, who was too close, and oh, then denied my... his own teammate's plant. Holy... I... You wouldn't have even that thought is, about that. That's that was just unfortunate. Purdue just threw their own round, which was a 4v2. They just didn't do anything on time. They came at the last second, had their own TK, resulting in someone else planting, not taking out the Maestro cams, and then just stunning their own teammate, denying their own plan. This is a round that should have gone in the way of Purdue. They could have been 6-5 right now, but that they just they just fumbled in all the wrong areas. I'm, I'm not even on Purdue, and I feel cheated from that. That was... That's... That's really rough. I oh, if I was Purdue, that's that's gonna be a hard mental state to come back from, knowing that you should have taken that round, having the perfect cover for that, and just just it, that's just one of those few uh, siege things that not everyone knows about, um, and you, you don't think about. There's so many small things that go on behind the scenes, so many just small okay. counters and everything that goes on. You just you can't think of it all, and that that's rough. Is uh, Purdue also has a disconnect at the beginning of the round and will get a rehost though. Yeah, luckily they're gonna get this time in order to look over what happened, especially after that much of a crushing round. I still can't believe the fact that he just stunned his own teammate out. That is just crushing to actually happen. Yeah, that that was 
that was really rough. Um, but so far, Purdue has only won a single round uh, attacking uh, Case Western, and it has been Penthouse Theater, which uh, Case Western has to go again. Uh, so we could very well see, uh, uh, well, a tie for Map 1. Yeah, that is just... I, I still got emphasis. That is just a terribly sad play at this point, especially when you want to hit match points. So now it is 6-5. In, honestly, in, in case Western's advantage, they may just be able to tie or even win their map now. Before this, it was either a tie or a loss, but now it's just they are guaranteed at least one point, unless they lose the next map, in which case it becomes a partial loss and they get no points. Yeah, so... Case Western here, um, if they win this map out, then they're at least guaranteed their tie. Uh, round differential-wise, so far, if they if they win this round out here, that's only a plus two. They still need that plus one to qualify for playoffs. Uh, so they're definitely not out of the woods yet. Yeah, it is. It, it just does come down to making sure they at least win the next map, even if they do tie this. Because they're guaranteed a tie here, and that one point is really what matters. One point, I think, a three-round differential, and as long as they can get at least a minimum of two rounds next map, they're, they're going to be able to do it, and they're going to be solidly in second place. Yeah, it's... That's... Uh, it's still got to be just such massive heartbreak from Purdue there, just... Having that really solid spot, having that plant down, I, I, I still can't get over it. That, that's, oh, I, I don't. How, how would you pull back from that? That's, that's just got to be a horrible mental state to be in. And Siege is such a mental based game. You need to be, you need to have your head in it constantly, or else small mistakes like that happen. And it, it's those small mistakes that really do cost rounds. Honestly, at this point, Purdue just has to use his rehost as a reset for themselves. Tell themselves the previous rounds don't matter. What matters is the next round, as this basically guarantees whether or not Case Western goes to playoffs. And yeah, that's really all they can do at this point, making sure that they are at least able to tie Case Western's map and then win their own map. Yeah, and like I pointed out earlier, Purdue did win Penthouse Theater, which Case Western is locked into now uh, before. So it, it just comes down to a matter... If Case Western can either adapt to how Purdue play, uh, or if Purdue can just do exactly what they did last time and tie Case Western's map up, it'll definitely be. It, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. And if Purdue can take this rehost as a mental reset, which may have been why they took it, and may have been the smart play here, um, this they could definitely tie Case Western and then win their own and deny Case Western from even going to playoffs. Yeah, I believe here, Case Western Keys go to Blue Bar or Penthouse. Um, it really just, once again, comes down to which one they like, as Blue Bar is generally just a favorite, but as some teams just fumble on it, they decide to go into uh, Penthouse instead. Yeah, and I believe the rehost was called after the site pick, so they will still be stuck in Penthouse Theater. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not 100% familiar on those rules. Um, but we'll get right back into it right now, and we'll find out very shortly. I'm pretty sure they're going to be stuck penthouse theater, though, as, as that's what they went last time. Yeah, I believe once the rehost is called, everything that's already happened must happen. So if a six-pick happened, that same six-pick has to happen, too. Yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense, honestly. Um, but... Um, it, it it just it, it all comes down. There's there's some little nitty gritty rules like if it happened mid pick phase, ops could change. Uh, in which this case it, it did, so ops could change. Um, but site will be locked in. Yeah, and the thing with the Rios is that both teams now have times to strat. As I'm pretty sure Purdue saw where they were going. As you can even tell by sound alone, most of the time you don't even drive your drone in just hear where reinforcements are happening and are able to do whatever you want with that. And Case Western can take this time to say, hey, we need to do this in order to win, and they can just re-go over the strat real quick, which does help quite a lot, especially when you're in high danger situations, they all just got this time to cool down and reset. Yeah, and now with a recent change too, being able to choose where your drones spawn, they could have 
they could have had a drone spawn right outside of the drone hole outside of blue bar to just quickly check to see if they're there and then during the rehost talk about it um so actually really interesting op picks coming out here from case western we see both a cav and a vigil and a mute three ops uh, we've seen a vigil before but both mute and Cav uh, cavera here uh we haven't seen played yet and i'm interested to see if noxious has been spotted out yet trying to be sneaky down below playing in blue bar right now yeah and it looks like purdue definitely did know where the uh, case western was going as they brought the hard reach of thermite and thatcher too as which you generally just don't do because it's just, it's just not that kind of map like we discussed way early on now they know what side they're on purdue was able to adapt and bring the offers that they wanted and noxious yeah that's that's a good thing about cav her silence step doesn't allow you to be located at all and another thing you can do is right before you get scanned you can just activate your silence step and it just won't show you so what this does is this can waste one of lagger's trackings or you can just kill him outright as he won't be able to know where you are but that doesn't stop you from getting droned out, and Laggers knows where he is now, so if Cav gets way too aggressive here, once again, Cav doesn't have the best gun, she's pretty weak, except for the pistol. If she hit that shotgun, she could take him out here, but Laggers gonna try closing in on him. Noxious is walking right past him, actually, and I think Cav knows- Cav is gonna down him, going for the interrogation! Oh my god! Everyone, the map's gonna get spotted out now. We could use the flurry of kills or all the attackers just running away right now as that... It, it looks like defense trying to get in position, but most of the attackers are just out of position and... Yep, they're all outside. They're being very careful. Cav deciding not to get too aggressive there and capitalizing on that aggression that the defenders are taking oscillations gonna be able to take out the visual. That was that was heartbreaking to watch. You never want to push a Cav alone, even if you are Jackal. Cav is your direct counter. You always want a teammate on your back to deny that interrogation. Um, and well, luckily for Purdue, they played it very safe and actually got a pick off of the interrogation. So it actually worked against Case Western there. Um, but it, it did waste a lot of time and momentum as well. The attackers are going to kind of have to funnel into VIP. And Oscillation here kind of funneled out by himself, but a, a prone angle there from Orion with the SMG 11. That was a really nice pick, a really nice angle. Uh, Vugo spotted it out, but just unfortunately not quite in time. Yeah, that was not the best fight for the Thermite to take, of all people, as there's an entire wall that needs to be opened and can only be opened by him. If it was a Thatcher gun, they could have been able to take it out from under as Buck. But because Thermite peaked it, now the wall is going to remain up and Penthouse is going to become that much harder to clear as there's only really two doors into it that they can take right now. With the Cavs still roaming around, yeah, see, she's here at main stairs. She can easily flank them if she wants to. And it, it just made life so much harder in for Purdue at this point. Unfortunately for Purdue, though, they do have that Nomad that they're playing. You hear those air jabs going out that will stop the flank, or at least halt it for a little bit. Um, so I'm pretty sure they have their back cover now, and they can focus on a site execution as Metro finds Orion and Metro with a 2, but Noxious peeking up white will find another, and Levin on the Maestro picking off another, and it's now down just to Metro here without Diffuser. It's going to have to push this Maestro out, but with 2 on him, that's going to be Case Western's round as well as case western's map yeah case western barely able to win their own map at this point they've guaranteed one point and i think a two round differential for themselves so all they need to do is either they just they just need to i think get one round differential well in order to get the round differential they're gonna have to win this next map too yeah that is true so they they're gonna have to win regardless so we're gonna have to see what happens here as it is purdue's map yeah, we'll be going to Consulate here in just a minute. Interestingly enough, actually, thinking that they're, they're going to have to take Purdue's map off of them. And, well, seeing how well Purdue did on Case Western's map, I'm I'm kind of worried for Case Western here. Uh, it, it was a very close game, ending it in a 7-5, coming down very close to it. Uh, the last round there really just coming down to that Cav interrogation. Um but before we do get into consulate here, we will be taking a quick bio break for our teams uh, and we will be back in five.
Welcome back to the CA Open Case Western versus Purdue game. Uh, next we're playing on Consulate, as in the previous map. Case Western was barely able to win their own map against Purdue in a close 7-5 finish, and which was on Coastline. And now we're going to go into Purdue's map. Yeah, interestingly enough, I brought this up earlier, but just to update it to the end of the game, through the entire 12 rounds, 10 out of the 12 uh, rounds was won based on opening picks. Whoever got the opening pick ended up winning the rounds uh, in the majority of the rounds, 10 out of the 12 of them, uh, which is quite substantial. Most of the other games that I've casted, at least, it, it's kind of been a lot more random, um, but... There was, there was definitely a really strong correlation between opening picks and round wins last map uh, on Coastline, but we'll see if it's similar on Consulate here. Uh, first ban coming out from Case Western will be the Jackal. Um, uh, Jackal's kind of an, he's a pretty annoying op to play against, uh, and he was played very well uh, on Coastline, using a lot of his tracks and rooting out the roamers quite effectively. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm really not surprised to see him taken off right away. Monty, again, being banned from Purdue. Uh, just, uh, just uh, again, we've explained it last map, just being able to be a human drone. There's not really much you can do about a Montane unless you have a smoke, and even then, he can just step out of the smoke uh, until Oryx is allowed anyways. Um, but defense from Purdue, they're going to get rid of the Maestro. Um, instead of the uh, echo this time, uh, kind of interesting to see. Uh, since Dokubi can now counter Echo, We've seen a lot more Maestro bands instead of the Echo bands, um, but not yet this match, uh, which, well, we have now. Uh, and the last band coming out is going to be the Valkyrie, getting rid of those black eyes. I believe Valkyrie's played pretty much every single round last map, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how the teams play without her on this one. Yeah, Valkyrie and Maestro were actually very well used last map as they were both great intel operators that Valkyrie just used on lagger to completely destroy people as everyone knew, or sorry, he knew where everyone was with the Valcams and the Maestro just, again, with that 80 round LMG, you can just go crazy with it as much as you want. Along with the Maestro camps, they can't be destroyed unless you use explosives and they can tase the living hell out of people. Yeah, I think Laggers came off a three-piece and then a four-piece back-to-back last round with the help of those evil eyes. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how well he does this map. Laggers definitely being one of the top fraggers from Purdue, having a couple teammates to back him up. Metro in a sil uh, oscillation there, really holding his back. And on the opposite side, Case Western. Um, Quan really being quite pertinent on the Ash, as well as Noxious and Levin to really back him up there. Um, the beautiful six-pick coming out from Case Western here, from the Vigil onto the Vigil. Uh, I, that's definitely going to throw Purdue for a loop. Yeah, dude, you got to play these mind games in order to make sure that no other university knows what you're doing. Especially if you six-pick your own operator often, it just it, they just don't know what to do anymore. They don't know who to counter. That's that's the very last thing you'd expect. If someone used a six-pick onto the same exact operator, it's, it's, it's like above my brain level, honestly. Um, but meanwhile, Purdue is going to six off. I don't even know i was too busy with the uh vigil yeah, six pick, we too but they six picked onto the blackbeard um so uh, again blackbeard's a really strong operator just in general having that face shield being able to block a bullet or two from hitting his head um but especially being able to repel on the windows and really fully utilize that where the only thing they can see is his head and well you can't shoot it with a face shield in front of it yeah and also blackbeard being taken here as they pretty much I guess Purdue predicted that Case Western would go top first as Blackbeard is very potent on these windows. He can easily take out people as his shield is just so good. Uh, it's been nerfed multiple times. People don't give it as much respect as they used to, but that, that you can survive an entire bullet to the head. And that is that just speaks for itself, honestly. Yeah, in a, in a game of headshots, a literal game of headshots, where headshots mean everything, being able to block even a single headshot can give you loads of time to be able to adjust your aim and get a headshot in turn. Uh, we're going to see Mozzie use his Nitro right away, um, but Oscillation repelled outside Admin, not the Blackbeard repel that's going to get the first pick, but instead the Buck is going to get rid of the Legion, who is playing in copy, but Noxious responds with a run out from Garage, using those impacts to take the Blackbeard off the board and off CEO windows. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like Kesos doesn't actually respond to that at all. They just, once it happened, they just sort of ignored him as they're already inside the building. Purdue is all the way into copy right now with two more on the roof. They're going to slowly make their way inside trying to get the long haul as they know that the vigil is currently bottom floor at least. And he's still waiting there actually as someone just repelled down, which was Zofia. Um, yeah, he didn't even attempt going back to site so far and Zofia is, I guess, going to try tracking him down after this. Yeah, Vigil being down in Garage, he himself can pretty much hold those CEO windows and deny the repel in there. Um, as well as having those impacts, he could just rotate up into Piano and break the floor above him and play vertically if he so chooses to. So that's not the worst positioning to be in. Um, and it is a nice even 4v4 as well. The rest of the attackers are going to be trying to push from Admin. You see Metro uses X Kairos pellets there to try to open the back of meeting wall there. But Orion on dock with that ACOG is going to be able to remove those off no problem without any contesting. With 50 seconds left, they're really going to have to do something. Some of the pellets do go off. They're the ones that dock couldn't quite see. And Vugos is going to emph uh, emphasize on that and take out Quan. And that's the Jaeger off the board. Noxious, though, with a another quick response, peeking up Visa stairs to take out the buck. Yeah, it comes down to a 3v3 at this time, as Vugos, Saber, and Metro are just going to walk into sight, actually. But he's going to get taken down, he doesn't know this long angle from Doc all the way from bathroom. But Leech is going to get caught off walking up Spiral. Once again, these late pushes, 15 seconds left, and a long angle from Doc. He's going to have to run in and try getting behind the bomb. Which is what he's going to try doing, but he's still not going to plant. And it's just going to be in the point, he's going to be able to get, honestly, spotted out. Because Doc can just push up now and take him out, and he's going to get off plant, and it's just going to be the end of that. Operators, you have run out of time. Now I'm interested oh. if that intel was coming from a mozzie drone or from a bulletproof from Doc there. I, I couldn't quite see because obviously Maestro and Valkyrie are off the board, but um, Case Western here on defense is still finding ways to utilize intel. Yeah, so it was it was actually the Doc's uh, deployable camera looks like. Oh, okay. Which is very well placed. But it also brings up the point that they didn't take it out either, as a mozzie drone's a lot harder to find, but a deployable cams, they're not exactly invisible, or or sorry, like they're, they're pretty easy to see is what I'm trying to say. So you can just shoot them very, or take them out with Sophia's impacts very easily. Yeah, they are quite obnoxious, but being bulletproof, uh, you either have to use a nade or one of Zos impacts, or you have to get up close enough to be able to smack it, or just lean under it or next to it to be able to take it out. Or you could utilize a Thatcher to disable it temporarily, uh, which might be what the six pick coming out from Purdue is. We will see Case Western go all the way to the basement here. Going to be interesting to see how they keep this garage door closed. Different teams tend to do it differently. Uh, bandit tricking this garage wall tends to be quite difficult with the yellow stairs door having direct lines of sight onto it. Uh, deployable shield on yellow stairs can usually help, but it, it's never a guarantee. Yeah, and the way that they're setting up is kind of curious. It looks like they're trying to hold... Uh... I forgot what that's called, I think pipes, they're trying to hold on pipes pretty well, and they're going to try bandit tricking. Usually you want to hold someone in piano too, just so that they can't take top floor and immediately buck and sledge down immediately, as they do have the buck on them right now, but so far they're all on sight right now. Yeah, no no Jaeger coming out from Case Western here, so Buck's nades can, if utilized correctly, just annihilate uh, a couple people, or if lucky, even more than that. Uh, but it looks like Purdue is going to be opting for a full top down take uh, as we see the drones coming out admin. Uh, and it doesn't look like Case Western has very many roamers. They're opting to run more of a turtle setup here, running all five players in basement. Yeah, which, oh, there is a Mozzie oh. actually top floor right now. Um, he's most likely going to try just opening a few holes in the floor. Yep, he's just going to open a patch to put a bit, a bit of pressure. If Purdue wants, they can just easily pressure him out, and the Bantrick's going to go down. It's going to be able to get the first one, but he's not going to be able to get it back. There's no more Bantrick going on anymore. Oh, he has a second one. Okay, that's curious. He's going to put it down, I guess, and he's going to start tricking the right side. He's going to be just playing games right now. There's not much they can do about that unless they decide to buck from above, and Ban is just not going to be able to do it anymore. He's not going to be able to take down his Bandit charges, and the wall's going to get opened on the right side. 
Yeah, the sound of the EMP there actually masked the placement of the exothermic charge. Uh, so not exactly what the gadget's intended for, but it, it, it got the job done. You see some bullets coming out from Orion as he tanks Oscillation up, but actually ends up dropping and frags out the IQ in Lobby. Uh, is, is he's just a roaming terror right now. They have no idea where he is, and he's just going to try to play it safe in this little cubby by Circle Desk. At this point, that's even a great rotate. If someone sees him on a drone, you can just drop immediately and get back to sight. But until then, he's just going to be holding this little lobby closet, as he does know that the Buck needs to try taking it in order to actually try taking sight from them. And as Buck did drop, I he wasn't seen by Mozzie, actually. Or now he's finally got him, and he's downed, and he's trying to take out the Buck. But he's not going to be able to get him. And that is the Buck taking him with the smoke now. Yeah, so now it's really just down to Thatcher Thermite outside Garage. Nomad's still up top, but she's going to have to try to fight this Mozzie who's roaming an ante, and she will sit him down, and now she can do some vertical play. Not sure if she has flashes or breaches, but Quan pushing up onto the breach there, taking that Thermite out. Uh, we saw two Toxic Babes go down. I'm not sure if he still has a third. He does not. He's used them all, so he has to play close on that gun. Um, is, well, Diffuser's down white van, and Nomad is flanking down Spiral. He's gonna need to try to frag out here, help his Thermite, try to allow him to put Diffuser down, or Thatcher, sorry. Um, but Thatcher goes down on top of Diffuser, Quan with another, and it's now just down to Saber gone. And, well, he's nowhere near Diffuser. He's gonna shoot the alibi holograms, get spotted out here, and Tango Mango is just gonna be playing under Visa stairs for that frag. Yeah, Purdue, they're not off to too much of a hard start, especially for their own map. They've been been—they've dropped two rounds already, and one of which honestly should have been a win, but just a lack of coordination is what got them killed. And here you could say pretty similarly, as once again, they took one-on-one -on -one fights, I think three or four times there, which just dropped all of them. They tried to... The two of them up top, I believe it was Buck and Nomad, tried to push Mozzie CEO. So they were trying to take the 2v1 fight, uh, but Mozzie with the Super 90 in his pocket was able to open up the pillbox hatch and drop into piano and take the fight against IQ, who was by herself. Um, so really good plays from Orion coming out, backing out of fights that he probably won't win and taking fights that he probably will and being able to pick them off one by one. Um, just playing it really smart, uh, but... Case Western here winning the first two sites means they will have to go their tertiary site here, uh, which will be lobby press room. Uh, that's that's usually the standard tertiary site. We don't usually get to see much split floor, unfortunately. Yeah, the split floor is honestly it can be a very great site depending on how you play it, but it's it's because of its relative newness, I guess, and just how most teams would just like to go with the meta in order to use like previous established strats that have been going on for a long long time they would just rather go into lobby and curiously there aren't as many ACOGs as I thought there would be for lobby as lobby it just becomes a lot of long range fights especially out the front door and then a few close range for when the attackers decide to sneak in from either I think it's Visa or Yellow Stairs yeah, you can just opt to play more vertical holes instead of those long angles. It shortens them quite a bit as you see smoke opening up above main door here with the shotgun, making those vertical plays possible. Uh, just shortening that distance just a little bit. Uh, the Ryan upstairs was super shorty, just, just really transforming this map into how they want to play it. Uh, opening up different angles that hopefully the attack doesn't know about or doesn't see. Yeah, the attack is going to start off from the front, and obviously they're going to, it's the best to take a top down as defenders. Once again, they hold the top floor, open up a ton of holes, and then start shooting out the attacks once they start taking lobby. Buck looks like he's going to start off on the console windows, and so is Hibana. It doesn't look like they've been droned in yet, and there is someone watching. He sees a tiny leg, he's going to start peppering it a bit. Only going to do around 30 damage. Visual, no, he's spotted out, and he's going to try getting away, activating his cloak. The rest of the attackers, they look like they're going to come through Spiral Window, I believe. And also, there's one coming Admin, and Vidros disappears. I believe that was a nade that was tossed? Yes, but it's in the wrong area. Sivan is also lit up by the Vigil, and he's going to be doing a little dance. Mozzie's going to run out, but he's not going to run out enough. If he just went a little 
bit more forward. He probably could have gotten the Hibana, but he fell back as he didn't think that she would be there. And Buck's gonna enter console at this time. Yeah, Orion here has been a pretty pertinent fragger uh, for Case Western. He's gonna opt to try to play it a little bit more safe. Maybe not swing out as much as he should. And there he goes, finding a pick. That's the Hibana off the board, and Tango rotating up to find another one. And Orion just rubbing salt in the wound to find a third and it's now down to a 2v4 in favor of case western laggers trying to turn the tides as he downs the mozzie unfortunately enough for him the dock wasn't close enough to be able to use those stims which it looks like he's already used and he's on super low hp this is definitely very clutchable for purdue as they have some pretty spread out uh, presence here iq and uh, Capital both pushing from opposite ends of the map have Doc pinched here IQ seeing the feet of Doc and that's a down now when you down Doc you usually have to push very quickly so he doesn't stim himself up but he's out of stims so that's going to be a quick cleanup for laggers bringing it back to a nice even 2v2 and it becomes a 2v1 as Noxious got a bit too aggressive there especially with smoke and gets punished for it now it just comes down to a Jaeger of Levent taking on both Metro and laggers and even here recently, Jaeger's gun got nerfed, so once again, he can't do as much damage as he used to be able to square up to most attackers just due to the pure power of his gun. But now the attacker's guns definitely deal more damage than Jaeger's, and it just comes down to him having to hit his headshots now as that, once again, late pushes just seem to be happening all the time here. Levent cannot just walk into sight and tap just a diffuser, and he's already won the round. Ma what? Okay. <laughs> Metro just killed laggers for some reason. Now he's gonna try planting. And, uh, you, Levent, 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 you good there? What? I I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so to summarize, Metro decided to kill laggers for some reason, take out his diffuser, and then start planting. And right after that, Levent walked in, somehow missed the man who was planting, whose ass was sticking out the side of the piano, pre find the wrong area, and then immediately get shot to. Death as he potatoes onto Metro. Yeah, it's Levent. Just, <laughs> just, just I, take your time. Diffuser's going down. Just spot him out and shoot him. ADSing and shooting slows you down, so you can't quite clear that angle. And I'm, I'm pretty sure Capital still had all four of his bolts in his crossbow that he could have used to either smoke or, or flame out crosses. That, that I'm just, I'm in the disbelief of from that one. Oh my, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. It's, it's, I, I, yeah, it seems like Purdue threw one round, and for that, I guess, Case Western threw another round, but it's, I, I, I it must just come down to nerves, is what I'm guessing at this point. So, like what Purdue did earlier of just not thinking straight when they were in a pressured situation, I guess Purdue did something different, that's similarly sorry, and then Case Western somehow one-upped it by just not looking carefully enough, and they paid for that. Purdue gets their first round off of honestly a round that they really shouldn't have won. Well, I'm I'm gonna put that one on the fact um, that Case Western actually did ban Valkyrie, so that's a lot of their intel off. They didn't have the intel on exactly where the, the plant was going down, so Jaeger just missed the shots, I guess, and just missed the the planter. Um, luckily, though. For the, the the planted, they got it down just in time to come off and find that frag very quickly. Um, Metro, the frag onto his teammate though. That's oh, you can't be making mistakes like that. That round probably would have been very easy. Um, having someone to defuse and have someone to cover is huge. Having to defuse by yourself usually means a round loss. Um, but into the next round, it's a still uh, oscillation here is. Already in admin on Amaru there, taking it very quickly. Tango Mango trying to push in from copy to push some presence, but I don't think he knows that they're in. That's now three attackers in admin. This is a very quick take from Purdue, just in right away, taking the ground that they've droned out already. Yeah, Tango just cornered himself by walking into Kitchen, so tried running all the way back, and he tried shooting the drone, and he's going to pay for it, as once again, you don't want to fall back into there. You can just walk all the way into long if you want to. But instead, he decided to fall into the small kitchen area and he paid for it as he was pinned. And then he tried firing at a drone and tried running out for some reason, so trying to hold his ankle. He was going to try opening up the top of the yellow walls, curiously, instead of trying to use it usually on the bathroom yellow walls where you can just push in. But 
Those were also soft. She used it on soft walls when I guess Sophia could have done it instead, but whatever. That's their choice. It yeah, the ex Kairos on the back of meeting wall didn't quite work out for them last time as they were shot off quickly. Um, so instead of using it on top of yellow, wasn't a bad play. It could have been shot open, uh, but Vigil droned out even though he was cloaked was shot from Skylight there. An oscillation just rubbing the salt in, pushing in further with another quick two. Um, Diffuser's going down now. They have meeting fully, and it's down now just to Orion on the dock. And we know Orion to frag, and there he goes. There's one. He just needs to find four more. He's going to need to ace this out to win this. Um, and in the post-plant scenario, it is definitely very tough. A lot of repelled, very tight angles here. Um, oscillation here with a really nice spot, just hanging, standing outside those meeting windows. But Orion with another is going to go down from Habana repelled on CEO windows, and Metro is going to finish off the round for Purdue. That was pretty clean round by Purdue, as they were just able to pick off the defenders one by one. Um, not first they got the bandit pinned in kitchen, and then as Vigil tried rotating all the way up the spiral stairs, he got caught off as someone was watching the stairs already. Yeah, con considering that last round with the team kill and then having to diffused by yourself that they look like two completely different teams that was really clean watching the flanks and covering it all and just taking uh taking ground very quickly uh, if purdue keeps on this they could deny case western from going to playoffs yeah and here metro he's gonna six off the nomad actually uh we'll see if that actually goes through yeah into a thermite i guess they just forgot to bring him and they needed someone to six as they still want to keep the Zofia, the Buck, and the Hibana, and obviously the Thatcher. The Nomad could actually work out quite well, but unfortunately they... I, I guess he just went with the wrong loadout initially. As you can deny most of the roamers that Purdue does... Or sorry, that Case Western does use. Yeah, well... So, Purdue won the last two rounds, so console meeting top floor isn't actually locked out for Case Western here. Uh, so, that was actually a good six pick, making sure that you have some more hard breach in case they did go garage, uh, which which they did end up doing. Um, Nomad, in saying that though, Nomad is always a good pick for console. There's a lot of runouts, a lot of windows and things to jump out and try to get the flanks. Um, but without the Nomad, it is still doable. Claymore still exists, and as long as you have someone watching it, it shouldn't be too hard. Uh, Monsi's going to be roaming up by Admin, and he will be droned out uh, very quickly there. As they know he's up there. Uh, I'd be interested to see if Purdue decides to go for a top take, or just try for Sight this time instead. Yeah, and also I want to touch on something quick the band was doing with the punch holes on the wall. Those... So are usually done to let the sound come through, but they don't actually work. You need a shotgun sized hole. You can't do multiple sized punch holes. Those actually don't help with sound at all. You need a shotgun sized hole in the wall. It's for sound to transmit better. And he's going to try tricking it, and the thermite's going to realize and immediately take it off. He is smart. And I guess the is going to try throwing his charge here, and the band's probably going to try picking it up right now. And he's going to try immediately placing it back down in order to try and trick it. And the thermite's doing quite well here, constantly changing where it is, tricking out the bandit. Try and take out his last two charges, and he's gonna get the left wall out. As Bandit just wasn't able to keep up with the amount of mind games that Thermo was throwing at him. Yeah, laggers though, being able to take out Orion on the roam, but Tango Mango being able to respawn and taking out Saber Gone, that's the Habana off the board, but pushing out carelessly, Oscillation is gonna clean him up up real quickly uh leaving the man advantage in favor of purdue and with that garage open uh this is definitely looking like this is gonna go towards purdue as long as they don't make any mistakes like they've done a few times in the past being sure to do this very carefully drone everything out figure out where they are laggers with another pushing down yellow it's now down to just quan and levin the smoke in the jaeger it is doable the smoke canisters can deny levin finds the laggers on the zofia but takes a lot of damage from outside and Buck pushes into Kitchen on the back to finish him out. It's not down just to Quan on very low HP. He's going to turn around and find the Oscillation off the Buck. But unfortunately, a 1v2 just doesn't usually work as Metro will finish out the round. And Purdue is up for the first time on console. You see that Purdue is also finally fixing the mistakes of pushing too late. As this time they were in player or trying to attempt to plant around the 1 minute 20 mark which was a lot better than their last previous, where they would push in around 15 seconds. 
And a lot of trades did happen there. It came down to a 1v1 despite starting as a 4v2 as, uh, sorry, West Case Western was almost able to clutch it, but just at the very end floundered. Yeah, so Case Western going to try to go garage once again. Going to try to win this one out. Um, Purdue almost taking the Nomad. Maybe they decided to six it. Is that would be a smarter option. Um, her gadget does make a little bit of sound, but if you're not being careful, uh, it will catch you off guard. Um, nope, they're just going to stick the Habana. Yeah, honestly, double hard breach may be the name of the game here. As you want to go from two different areas, take one hard breach on each side in order to open it up. Especially because you want to get the Hibana hatches so that, you know, once you open up the hatches, a lot more pressure comes in. And if the Thermite Charges were all gone, you could honestly just use some of the Hibana, ha or Hibana Charges in order to open up the wall. Especially because what you can do with Hibana is only use one charge and still open up. I'm not sure if it was patched or not, but for a certain time, if you aimed it at a certain... At, what is it called? A spoke? If you aimed it at a certain spoke and lined up with the wall perfectly, you could make a small crouch with only one Hibana Charge and just walk in using that and yeah, still use two other Hibana Charges for other areas. Huh, that's that's interesting. I'm pretty sure you can still use it for a prone hole. I'm not sure if you're able to crouch through it, uh, but just due to the nature of the Kairos pallets being six individual little breaching devices, being able to place it on two walls at once. Oh, Bandit can't trick two walls at once, uh, so it does give a little bit of a leg up, especially if you have an exothermic charge on the third wall. Uh, that's a guaranteed opening. Uh, but last time, Hibana did drop back uh, underneath uh, Visa there, so she might be pushing back again. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if she rotated around to push with the Thermite though. Yeah, and Thermite's gonna go for the mind games immediately again, and Panda's gonna respond in kind, trying to place down as many as he can. But this time, oh, he's putting on the wrong wall, but it works out anyway, and he's gonna try picking up his own charges again. These mind games are really fun to watch, honestly, just seeing what each person is going through trying to get it. Thermite really says no one putting on his wall, and he's gonna get the middle wall, I believe? No, nope, still not happening. Never mind. I just... And he does it too early. He puts on the charge too early, so he can't get the thatch on it in time. And I think he's going for the middle wall, but the ban is on it. It's just... This is just weird to watch at this point. Uh, he's going to try going for the other wall, but I think... Yep, that's both Thermite Charges gone right there, and... Now the attack is going to have a lot more of a difficult time, as they either have to come down yellow stairs or push from service. As Lagros takes out Orion, it, that is the first entry of the game, and traded by Tango takes on Oscillation with the buck gone. And Diffuser! That is Diffuser oh, as well, no. Diffuser down in basement service. That's going to be hard because now Purdue is going to have to take that back. I, I don't even know what this is called, honestly. I never push back here. Archives. 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 They're going to have to push Archives to try to get Diffuser back. Well, Noxious is going to find another pick uh, on, the, on the laggers there. That's one of their top fraggers. That's a really good pick. And it looks like Purdue's not even going to really care about Diffuser being down. They're going to opt to just try to push Sight as hard as they can. Uh, Sabergon rotating down Spiral Stairs as well as his teammates backing him up a little bit. They're going to have to try to push this Legion out. He is completely alone as both Kitchen uh, and Pipe's door are both barricaded off, so they can both push and pinch this Legion, and they're going to have to do something quick because there's only 45 seconds on the clock, and Diffuser's still down, and, well, they still haven't made much progress. Tango Mango, though, going to be punishing uh, uh, Vugos there, I believe, pushing alone by himself, not quite setting the pinch up. Again, pushing alone Metro, but this time he's going to get the jump onto Tango, leaving it down to a 3v2. The attackers now have the Diffuser, but they only have 20 seconds to execute, and Smoke with three Toxic Babes, one goes out and detonates, a second one goes out, just holding on, waiting to detonate it, and, well, I don't think the attackers are going to get through Kitchen Door. Thermite's going to be pushing pipes with Diffuser in hand, he's going to find one, but he's going to have to put Diffuser down, and unfortunately, both Case Western, Quan and Noxious find the last two frags. A uh, 3G split half, especially on constant on side of attack, isn't bad. Uh, they can still bring this back quite hard as def this map is kind of defender sided in the end of the day. And we saw that Purdue's coordination was a lot better than their attack last map too. 3-3 three, three split, yeah. 
it, it's a nice even tie, and Purdue definitely did a lot stronger on defense. So I'm interested to see how this round's gonna go. I'm I'm expecting it to be pretty close, either ending in a seven five or a six six. Um, both of these teams just they chain some rounds together, uh, but then it's really just a, a back and forth. It's really just a hustle to try to get Diffuser down or stop Diffuser in the last 15 seconds for the majority of these rounds anyways. Um, Purdue choosing to bring an Echo, which actually Case Western didn't do it all, interestingly enough. Having some sort of denial, um, Orion though going to read that and bring an IQ just to easily dispatch those yokais. Yeah, they're going to be sixing off the dock onto the Cade. Uh, Cade, very powerful with that TCSG, along with having his Electro Claws. You can actually trick Kaban Charges with it. Most like what I feel like what they're going to do here is either put on the hatches or leave that on the wall initially so the Bandit has four charges to trick with, rather than just using one the entire time. They're going to be putting shields on yellow. This really does help the Bandit, as what you really can do if you decide to is just open up yellow, run in, and kill the yay or sorry the bandit as fast as possible uh i've seen it happen multiple times and they're going to try preventing that as much as possible with the barbed wire and a shield on yellow yeah k just having more deniability there the more deniability the better um you saw last round case western when they were able to keep the garage closed they won the round because there's just so many angles to peek through garage um and once garage is open you really can't rotate through garage whatsoever without taking damage or even getting picked so having just a little bit more denial there to even aid the bandit out in case uh bandit needs to back off because he's getting pushed from yellow stairs um you have that ranged ability um, you, you see case western here opening above gonna actually light the bandit down to very very low as they open the floor above him and that'll probably be probably be the bandit wires off the wall uh, but thankfully due to the cade they can trick that from far away if they do it in time but it doesn't look like they will lag is going to take the fight onto the upside down repelled ash and going to get away with it with no hp loss that is the ash gone and as you saw last map Quan was very very influential in certain rounds before you see that's not going to happen this time as ash is off the board and they still have all their echo cams echo risked his life there if he was gone that could have easily turned south but he was able to get away with it with Again, no HP lost. Yeah, that was a very high risk, high reward pick there. To getting that Ash off, Quan being very pertinent on that Ash, uh, and it worked out for him very well. Um, and Oscillation here, gonna opt to go on the roam with 10 HP. Um, he definitely has a good gun for it with a fire rate, and I don't think they've droned up top. And Metro's gonna be rotating up to help him out, gonna be doing some damage onto the Zofia, but Noxious is going to sit him down, and Orion is going to find the Bandit as well, and picked apart that roam game very, very quickly. That was that was some good flank watch, just from the people pushing site as well. Uh, and that brings it back uh, to a 4v3 in favor of Case Western. Well, never mind, a 4v2 as Noxious finds another pick, and that's Laggers, the Echo off the board. They can no longer deny Diffuser unless they frag, and Orion just going to keep on fragging out as he finds another... But Sabergon is going to find a down onto Noxious behind him in Kitchen, but Diffuser's down in a 1v3. He's going to have to push in, and, well, the attackers are just holding very long angles. Angles from above, just everything you can think of, and this is going to be a tough retake for Sabergon. He's going to be pushing towards pipes here. Going to actually move around the Orion there on IQ, who is holding above. But with 15 seconds left, still three on the board. He's going to have to push Diffuse or push Frags. And he's just out of time already. He's gotten Tango. But with seven seconds, that'll be the Frag and the round for Case Western. A very, a very pertinent round for Case Western. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like they just weren't up to snuff for it uh they got up too aggressive near the end there especially with the jaeger and bandit which just gave case western all the confidence they need to charge into sight and take it as much as they needed it just came down to good roam watching along with a bit of luck as the jaeger barely missed his shot onto the Sophia last round yeah, it could have been a completely different round there if he found the frag onto the Zofia and actually pinched Orion on the IQ with Bandit. Uh, but unfortunately, sometimes you just miss shots. That's just how it works. Um, 
Stead Purdue going to be going all the way upstairs now. Actually using that 6 pick very well. Showing the Doc and 6ing the Cade when they go basement. Or showing the Cade and 6ing the Doc when they go up top. Purdue's actually using these 6 picks very well. You were right. And with that Doc, once again, they can hold long angles and global cam like Case Western did in the last half. Need to locate and, defuse bombs. and with this, they're going to... There's quite a bit of intel out right now too with the Legion, uh, Echo, and Amazi. Amazi obviously, as much as he denies intel, he gains the intel while also denying it as if he gets a drone. The, it's like a portable valve cam. You can put it anywhere you want as long as it's on the roof or something. And meanwhile, Case Western is going to be going, I think, with the exact same setup as last time, as they probably think it's downstairs due to that uh, six that went out earlier. Yeah, unfortunately, with Purdue not having a round win on defense under their belt just yet, the attacks, the attackers aren't sure which site they're going. They could be going up top, they could be going basement, uh, they could be going split or first floor if they really wanted to. Um, most teams usually don't, um, but you gotta kind of have to split your loadout to be able to take both, because you're not sure what it is. Yeah, and starting off here, it looks like they're gonna go admin as you realize quickly what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna take admin and console, but Oscillation's gonna get picked immediately as he was still setting up his rotation to run out. And Orion just decided to pick him off on it. That is the Mozzie gone. If a drone gets taken now, it stays there. It can't move. And that's a valuable piece of intel gone, actually, as he was setting up way too late. Yeah, he just, he really wasn't ready for it. Uh, fortunately enough, his pest still will get drones and break them and make them unusable for the attack. Uh, but they can no longer be utilized by the defense. Doc here is going to be... Droned out and copy actually take a bullet through the wall and he's just gonna he's gonna sit the ash down uh, If you don't think ash has a head hit box. Well, there you go. She definitely does um, Saber gone puts a bullet right through her head and decides to heal up laggers with a volt out of Meeting windows there with a pick onto Orion. Uh, that's That's case Western's two most pertinent fraggers off the board already That was a great turnaround there from Purdue considering oscillation got picked so early yeah, two early picks are very good, especially when it comes down to, I think, two of their better fraggers of Orion and Quan. And now they're in admin and copy alone. As Doc is still sitting to the left of that door, not being droned out or anything. He could easily just take out the... Yeah, and there it goes. There goes the one of the people who was in admin, and now there's only one in kitchen as Thatcher. And he gets taken out to... There. <laughs> there's just... So many kills coming out from Purdue right now. All that's left is Thermite, who's stuck in kitchen, trying to drone out in front of him and behind him. I think he missed the dock. He probably heard him fall. No, he was pinged. He's going to try taking the fight with him. Regardless of what happens, it's still a 1v3. He's down to half HP now against three defenders who are all full HP. And one with an ACOG. Legion Mines on the floor and still a Jaeger with a Carbine active. He's going to try slowly pushing up as there are two in sight and one is sitting on Spiral just prone. Thermite, really not sure what to do. Seems like he's still getting on his drone at this point. But with only 30 seconds left, he either needs to push right now. Or at this point, just try saving his KD or something. Well, with laggers on the Echo as well, if he moves both drones to the plant, he can deny for quite some time if Thermite even gets into that position to plant. But no, he's going to take the peak and try to frag Thermite. And he's going to get sat down. And well... Now Tango is going to be stuck in that defuse, pushing up behind him is Metro and misses him. But luckily, uh, Vugos there from the front is going to sit him down for him, and that's going to be Purdue's uh, win right there. The tunnel vision on Jaegers this game is just insane to look at, honestly. I, I in the piano one, I kind of understood. He was kind of tucked behind the piano, like you could just see like the very back sliver, you know. Uh, Obviously, the players don't have the nice outlines like we have. Um, but there where Thermite was sat right in front of the bomb, I, I it, it happens. It's When people don't move, it's they're harder to see. Um, I guess we're just, uh, a lot of the players are just a bunch of T-Rexes or something. But. Yeah, but okay, now going into this next round, it looks like they're going to be taking similar setups again. The Goyo coming out, out of Purdue, haven't seen this at all from either teams, I believe. So, 
Yep, Goyo, obviously, he can, he can knock out a lot of intel. Just three of those going down, that is around two Ash charges and a Zofia charge. And then after that, they only have one left to use for whatever they want. Which I assume would be deployable cam from possibly Jaeger, as there is no Maestro. It's generally who you want to pair up Goyo with, so that you have to waste all their utility on Goyo. As the, the Zofia is going to be sixed out for a Nomad, which is honestly for the best at this point, as they can stop... Most of the roamers just from pushing from behind them, especially when you're at lobby. Um, yeah, and Zerfan, I don't know if you know this, but basement is still Purdue could still go basement if they wanted to. They decided to go lobby here, so I'm I'm actually kind of interested to see this strat. That I mean, I I don't have any strats for lobby like it's it's a, it's a tough site to hold that's i think it would be tougher than basement um but apparently purdue doesn't think so and they're going to be holding lobby instead of basement um it, it, with the goyo it definitely is doable those vulcans being able to buy a lot of time as well as a lot of cover as long as they aren't turned and blown up on the defenders here yeah, this side pick was on just definitely a bait, and I think it is, it is most likely that uh, Case Western actually fell for it, as you can't really use thermite in too many areas on this map unless you decide to reinforce the hatches, which are generally open in order to allow for rotations. And yeah, once again, the Goyo, very, he can be used extremely well, just putting around three unusual plant spots, especially at the front door, and just blowing them up every time that the defenders try or the attackers start trying to plant. Echo's actually top floor right now. He's going to take out Orion, I believe, through a bullet hole. And then he's going to start getting closer. I don't think he realizes the Ash is on the window. He's going to start trying to peek it. But the drone sees him, and they know the Echo's not looking in his way. He's going to try peeking, but gets taken out by the Echo again. Lagger's just doing a lot right now for his team. As that is two entire attackers gone now. And a third one that's super lit. About, I think, 15 HP, but... To be able to take one with his air jab, but then gets traded out immediately by the Echo, who then gets traded out again by Levent, who then gets traded out by Vugo. It's now down to a 1v4 Levent versus all of Purdue at this point. Um, this this is really aggressive playstyle coming out from the Echo. Usually as Echo, you're the one sitting in bathroom on first floor, just watching cams, playing it very safe. Being able to use that utility last second is 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 amazing but just this aggressive playstyle from laggers being able to take out one two three of the attackers right away well I, you don't really need to deny the plant if there's no attackers left to plant so it's it's definitely working out for him and he did get fragged out in the end but it, it's now down to a 1v4 i i think it was a well worth it uh, Le, uh levent here is gonna have to pull some sort of miracle off here if he wants to pull this back um and it doesn't look like he has any moment, uh, momentum going just quite yet. He's not really quite sure what to do. Gonna rappel outside. Um, at times like this, some teams what they like to do is just sit on the roof, which is, looks like what he's doing, and just review yep. what they should do for the next few rounds. Uh, you see pros do it, you see college players do it. And just review what they want to do for next round, because, I mean, at this point... If Case Western loses the round after this, they're not going to playoffs anymore. And they need a three-round differential. Yeah, so if Purdue does end up tying this map here, they deny Case Western from going to playoffs because that's only the two-round uh, round differential from last map, and that's just not enough. And it's, it's three to tie round differential. They want four if they want that spot guaranteed. Um... You see Levent there throwing his drones up, doing some skeet shooting there. Um, he still had both his drones in his pocket, so he he could have tried something. Uh, I, I always prefer the motto, you know, you may as well try. Uh, how else are you going to get those crazy, you know, 4K clutches, ace clutches if you don't try it? Especially with two drones in pockets, uh, four dead teammates to watch them. Um, but they just decided to sit down, talk it out, uh, because Case Western, they, they really need these next few rounds here. Yeah, Case Western at this point, I think they need win three rounds in a row, right? In order to actually progress on. But if they can't do it, then it's just, once again, like I said earlier, this is their playoff game. If they win this, they get playoffs. If not, it just goes all down the gutter at this point. Yeah, it, it literally comes down to Case Western needs to win these next three rounds flawlessly. They, they can't throw a... 
Oh, oh, that's actually a good point. I just thought if they get partial win, that's two points. And that's actually above the person in second place. So never mind. <laughs> if they tie this out, they, they still get partial and they still do go to playoffs. Um, so Keith Western still can do this. If they tie this map, um, they'll end up going to playoffs. Um, but Purdue needs to try to shut them down here. Uh, Purdue just needing two more rounds to close this out. Um, Case Western had a very, very good take on Basement last round, taking it almost flawlessly, I believe. Um, so Purdue hopefully is going to be able to adapt to that and have a bit more of a closer round. Yeah, just... It, it really, like I said, I keep emphasizing this, but, I mean, playoffs, a lot of teams do look forward to it, and just being knocked out when you're so close it can be heartbreaking. Case Western, they clearly do have the firepower to do it, as I Purdue has also studied them a lot. As you don't just see a team going 1-5 and five all of a sudden doing this good. They obviously fixed a lot in order to show that they're not going to go down without a fight either. And, and honestly, Case Western, everything that they've worked for could pay off right here. But the stretch is not done, and there's just one more bound until they make it. No, these next few rounds here are the most important for Case Western, actually. All past games, that's that's done and good. Um, but that's in the past. They need to focus on the three rounds ahead of him. Um, we see Sabergon on the Cade here, trying to Cade trick this wall. Kind of interesting. He is going to get the Exo Charge, uh, but the second EMP will get the first Claw. And, well, there's only one EMP left. If Sabergon times this correctly, he can deny the Exo Charge, but I think he's going to place it a little bit early, not quite get the Exo. And now the Thatcher's EMP will be able to clear it off. Oh, no, Thatcher used all three. I misheard. That's all three EMPs gone. And the Cade's on the wall. The attackers are now going to have to rely on taking Piano and relying on the IQ to take it from above. There are nades being thrown down, and I think they worked? I may be wrong there, but... Yes, it looks like it did. Yeah, and the thermite wall is going to be open now, the right middle side, and... Now it's just free reign for the attackers. They can easily take this, but look at that. The Jaeger's still walking down from top floor. There's still flanks available, and it doesn't look like Case Western is knowing of them. Purdue can still easily win this. This Jaeger can easily wipe half the team if he wants to. Gonna have to do it very carefully though and make sure he hits his shots because a few missed bullets could be the difference between you finding a frag and you getting fragged. Um, but we got two roamers still on the roam. Um, definitely could cause some massive problems. Mozzie here in CEO has some vertical angles that actually look all the way down to basement uh, to the plant spot. So this could be denied by Mozzie. Metro though is going to find the opening pick onto Noxious and that's Zofia off the board. That's really what Purdue needed right now. Now the attackers are going to be worried about the roamers and are going to have to slow it down just a little bit. Um, but yeah, IQ Buck just frantically looking for something. Thatcher and Thermite just trying to drone to get some sort of momentum. 40 seconds left. They still have a smoke and an echo to deal with, both great at denial and oscillation from above as well, taking out Orion on the IQ. Thermite, though, going to try to put the diffuser down. And does the defense know this? No, Echo's taking a fight right now. He finds the pick, but he doesn't get the deny. And the diffuser's down, leaving Tango and Levent to take this back. And this is a hard spot to take. Tango's gonna find one, and I believe that's Levent downing Oscillation and finishing him off, bringing it to a 2v3. Camera's still up. I don't believe they're gonna be able to long arm this. Vugos, though, trying to use his smoke canisters to try to give some sort of cover, and the defenders are just gonna have to start taking peeks and fragging out. Lagger's almost finding the headshot, not quite. Tango, though, with a quick two, and Metro on the run out is gonna find. The Thermite and the Thatcher, but he is not oh. going to have enough time. Just barely short to deny the Diffuser. The defense really just needed to do something a little bit quicker there to try to act on the post plant. Um, but unfortunately, just took a little bit too long and great cover from the attacks there. That was having all five defenders still alive actually ended up hurting Purdue there because they didn't have anyone on those Echo Drones to watch for plant. That that was that was heartbreaking. Along with that, uh, I don't know who it was, but they were able to push the Echo at the same time as the plan was going down. So even if Echo was trying to get on his camps, he would have been killed before the plan could have even been denied. I believe. 
Yeah, that that push. I'm not sure who it was either, but pushing even though they did get fragged, um, allowing that to go down. And uh, Vugos though on the smoke should really be listening for that diffuser to be going down to try to smoke it out and deny it. And unfortunately, just probably from the gunfight between Echo, um, just couldn't quite hear it, and the diffuser did go down. Um, some both interesting six picks coming out here tango mango from thermite onto blackbeard and oscillation from mozzie onto frost um we haven't seen frost played yet tonight um and i i heard something about her getting a new site yeah she got mozzie's hollow site for his p10 roni Ooh, that's that's gonna make her much more viable because before all she had was the reflex and the red dot and her gun does something like 44 damage a shot or something and uh, that's that's quite massive. Uh, fire rate isn't necessarily there, uh, but with that fire much damage, it's it, it does a lot. Yeah, fire rate's the second lowest in the game though to trade off for that insane oh, damage. Jesus. But I think it's only beat out by Cavs M12, which has I think a 10 10 lower fire rate, I believe. Ooh. Which are both yeah guns that you generally want to make sure that you're not engaging really close to people with but anyway action phase is starting now they have the blackbeard with the sr25 actually that's an interesting choice as a although both guns are viable there's always been one that's better and it's always been trading off between initially it was the mk17 on year two became the sr25 and then changed to the mk17 again sr25 one more time for some reason and now it's the mk17 but he's going with the sr25 once again people have their own tastes and they can choose whatever they want but in some cases, it may just be better to take a different gun, but I don't think Blackbeard's one of those operators as, once again, you just need to hit your shots with him as you're protected from one headshot. Yeah, DMRs were recently buffed as well, uh, having increased damage to both barricades and soft walls. Um, it's, it just makes him a little bit more versatile, as well as being able to break hatches in just a few shots. Um, could actually use this against the smoke if they were to open the hatch underneath them. Doesn't look like they will, as Blackbeard's just going to be sitting on those CEO windows and decide to repel up. Uh, but play him where he's strongest on windows. Uh, again, the repel going to be going connector against laggers here. Uh, just a crazy fragger for Purdue, just finding headshots. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to be the Blackbeard he's going to be going up against. Oh, getting very damaged, though, from the IQ on the upside down. Repel being lit to very low, as well as Vugos being lit. I believe that was from Blackbeard. Maybe, maybe not. Not quite sure. Lit regardless. The Doc on the team can heal them up if he has the chance to. And I believe that's what Laggers is going to be asking for is a quick stint. Yeah, if there's one person you want with HP on this team, it's the Echo, who's also laggers, who's been fragging out a lot. And looks like he's going to rotate down right now in order to make sure that he doesn't die and can stay on his Echo cams. Or, it's a run out. We're going to see how effective this is, as he may not have the best angle on Blackbeard right now. And no, he does not. And now the entire enemy team knows where he is. They know Echo's not on site. That's one less person to deal with. And they're not going to get a bit aggressive on that, knowing that he's not an admin. They're going to open up Kitchen, but I don't think they know Doc's there. They're going to have to drone him out in order to make sure that everything goes according to plan. But as that happened, Quan is going to take out Vugo. And Oscillation is going to take down Levin as the plant goes down as two people are in sight. Case Western making sure that they're going to at least ensure a tie right now. It just comes down to Saber. Doc, who is stuck in admin, he won't be able to honestly do much now. But, and there he goes. Yeah, Zofia is going to take him out immediately. And Ooh. Case Western has gotten their partial tie, I believe. Yeah, that'll that'll be partial win. That's two points for them. Um, and uh, that guarantees them a spot in playoffs, beating Elon by just a single. But a regardless, single Purdue is still fighting for their single point here. Um, well, no, because this is a partial loss for them so they're just trying to close this out not give uh case western a big round differential they're trying to keep him to just the two that they have already if they tie this out they will keep him at their two um if case western ends up winning this round out uh they'll have end up with a f plus four round differential Yeah, at this point, uh, it just comes down to getting better statistics for each player and the teams individually. Um, 
Looks like Tango's going to six on to a Blackbeard. They no longer need the Thermite, I guess. Uh, I don't remember what side it is because I'm dumb, but it is. Lobby, yep. Lobby. Going first floor. You really do not need Thermite for that. And. They're going to go for, I guess, the, the same setup as last time, it looks like. Um, the Jaeger obviously going to end up roaming bottom floor, like last time, I believe, or was it top floor, and the guy is going to have shields in order to ensure his teammates can stay safe along with being able to deny as much as he can, especially when the attacks do try planting. Yeah, in terms of opening picks, though, it, it, it's been a lot more random as opposed to coastline uh, and I suppose that makes sense considering coastline is a more frag heavy map it would make sense that if you get the first frag uh, it's more likely that you'll win the round uh, nothing nothing that I can really see Purdue has kind of been really dominant with the opening picks having all but three out of the 11 um, so that's that's quite impressive um, and that's why these games have been so close Purdue has been fragging quite heavily uh, but unfortunately uh, unfortunately for them, Case Western has just been able to play off that and just just play for Diffuser. There's been a couple rounds where they've gotten Diffuser down where they really shouldn't have been able to because Purdue is just so focused on fragging. Yeah, the, the fragging honestly has helped them quite a bit, but at this point, like, I'm actually curious to see how both teams play because, I mean, I'm pretty sure... Purdue knows at this point there's no point in trying to stop them. And Case Western's pretty happy with what they've done so far. But regardless, the Echo's gonna be playing top. Once again, it's curious how Laggers does play, especially when he's roaming as the Echo. The last person that you really want to be in any sort of danger, and he's usually the one in some of the most danger most of the time. He's constantly peeking stuff, he's constantly putting himself in dangerous situations such as roaming. But it does seem to be working out for Purdue, as there are three people trying to, currently trying to take top floor. One's on the balcony, one's on the connector window, and one is on console windows. Yeah, Mozzie and Echo here, both trying to hold top floor, both crammed into pretty much the same spot here. It's not looking good for them. So Ryan's gonna find one, and Tango is gonna find that headshot on the laggers, and that's the roam game down, and there's that DMR destruction I was talking about. That's Piano Hatch opened, and, well... Now Case Western has the entirety of top floor control. Oh, no, what's that? Metro's, he's holding admin still. I don't think he's droned out, but Levent will see him and frag him out anyways. And it's down just to Sabergon and Wugos here. Goyo and Smoke, both operators that have a lot of time buying potential with the Vulcans and the Toxic Babes. This is doable, seeing his Blackbeard's very low. He still have four other attackers to go through, but as long as they deny the plant, they can win this round out. This case Western just looking for any free peeks as they can through the floor. Orion, though, is going to find Vugos, and it's now down just to Saber gone as he downs one. Orion on the IQ, but Tango from above is going to finish out the round, and that'll be a full win for uh, Case Western. Three entire juicy points. They're going to playoffs. I'm pretty sure they're going to pop up in the champagne bottles tonight, and they're all happy. Oh, yes. That just overall really good games. I'm both coming down to the wire 7575 five. i i personally wasn't expecting it to be that close i was hoping for a close game and we definitely got one a lot of those rounds coming down to just a mistake or two um but score lines basically tell the whole story just very very close Yeah, and it looks like we are going to get an interview with Case Western, I believe. Um, who? Yeah, once again, they're going to be pretty happy. I want to see how that interview goes to them. Going to be looking for one. Not quite sure who it's going to be. Um, I'm oh, Case Western. Let's see. I'm kind of hoping uh, for Ryan want, or Quan. They. I want Levent just so I can ask him what happened that one round. <laughs> yeah, there there was a couple misplays. I'm sure there'll be some talking points on those because, well, th those were just some heartbreaking moments there. Um, but any anyone from Case Western will be able to give us some pretty good insight on it. Uh, but both Orion and Quan being probably the top fraggers for Case Western, but everyone from Case Western just being able to cover and refrag and just be able to get a couple picks whenever they needed it, uh, it just created a really a really good game so it looks like I think we're gonna get noxious for our interview 
Um, obviously, man has contributed a lot. He was playing mainly Sophia, I believe. Yeah, Noxious was more on the support role, mostly with Sophia, um, but also just sitting back and being able to frag off of early picks. Noxious, how are you feeling after those games? You know what, we're feeling, we are feeling great as a team. I'm feeling very proud of our team right now. We, we, we worked hard. We've been strategizing every single game. We've been doing ranks, and uh, it, it all worked out. Yeah, well, we could tell. Um, ha have you done the math on if you're going to playoffs or not yet? I think I think we thought if this we get this dub, we yeah, we making it. We're super excited because of the dub. Yeah, well, yeah, you made it because of the win. Um, you just needed the partial win, but you guys pulled out the full win. Um, we wanted you... to make sure. We wanted to make sure. Good, I respect it. Um, were you expecting oh. both the maps to be as close as they were? Seven five, seven five. That was. You guys, it looked a little <laughs> nervous a couple times. A little bit, a little bit. We thought we thought coastline. Usually, coastline's uh one of our stronger maps, so it was a little struggle on that one. But we pulled through. We just we ever after every round, we talked about it. We decided what to fix, and we fixed it. And then that got us the win. Yeah, look at looking back at the scoreline. Coastline just being just a heavily defender sided map for in in this scenario at least um purdue taking four off of you in the first half but you guys taking five off them in the second definitely brought it back um that was nervous for you guys a couple times that, <laughs> there were a couple plays that uh were a little bit in question but uh, i mean it worked out in the end it was it was like i was just on my team it was really just all about patience pretty much both games i think um just wait for them and they'll come to you and then you just be ready for them yeah, um, I, I I have one specific question. What are your thoughts on laggers on the Echo? He was very strong. He was so aggressive. <laughs> I've never seen such an aggressive Echo <laughs> with the runouts and everything. That was pretty uh, funny to watch, I think. Yeah, talk about unexpected. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, well, Zerfan, do you have any questions? The only thing I want to ask is, what do you have to say to your fans who are watching right now? Because I'm, I'm sure you've been receiving a lot of support from your Case Western fans, and there are probably a lot in the chat right now. <laughs> Actually, I have my friend watching next to me too, and he's, uh, he's been cheering me on the whole way. <laughs> uh, anything I had to say is, uh, if you want to play Rainbow, we're here to play Rainbow with y'all. Just let us know. <laughs> and uh, we do appreciate all the support. Um, and then some of our friends, we all we all have to pack up and go because of this whole situation happening right now. And they're uh, supportive of uh, us, you know, spending time from saying goodbye to go play Rainbow. They know. They know what's up. Yeah, well, fortunately for us, uh, we can play Rainbow in our houses quarantined all day long. So <laughs> it won't affect us too much. You know, that's fair. That's fair. Yep. Well, uh, Zerfon, if that's it from you... Noxious, do you have anything you want to say just to end it off? I know you already said a little bit, but anything else to add? Um, I th I think we're good. Yeah. We're very proud yes. of this dub we got right now. And then uh, we've been aiming for this playoffs the whole time. We've been calculating it every single time we would get a W or a, or a loss. Uh, I think, oh, I think we made uh, well on it. Yeah, definitely. Well... I guess that'll conclude our Week 7 game between <laughs> Case Weston and Purdue. Um, before we close out, though, I would like to give just a quick shout-out to all of our sponsors because they're awesome. They're what makes this happen. Um, firstly, Corsair. Uh, they have some really top quality peripherals and computer accessories. Uh, big thanks as they're buffing the prize pool for both invite and open, um, supplying some really nice keyboards and prize money as well so i mean that's that's always welcome um a shout out to rogue energy uh they have some really great energy drinks and powders uh, it's actually really good a lot of energy drinks taste like chalky or it, i had some rogue energy oh it's it's so good and i all i'm saying is i top fragged the game i had rogue energy so <laughs> i just don't, don't take that from me but uh, don't forget to use code cea at checkout for 10 percent off and lastly but of course not least uh what's new dot gg that's n-e-u uh dot gg for supplying some really nice clothing uh that is coming soon tm uh it's not out quite yet but we got some sneak peeks and it's looking really really good good um but stay tuned for that um i i think that's 
it from me. Zerfan, you have anything you want to say to close it out? Corsair has good keyboards. Yep. Take it from Zerfon. Corsair has good keyboards. Uh, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you guys follow the Twitch channel just so you guys know when we're going live. I know we're going to try to up production as much as we can. Um, but thanks for watching with us. And until next time, we'll see you later.